Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another episode of No Stinge Energy, man. We got a, a great episode today. We got a, a guest coming in, go drop some credit game on us. You know, credit is very important. And it seems like uh, we all know credit is important, but we don't ever leverage it. We don't ever use it. We don't ever try to figure out how we can get better credit. So we're going to have a deep dive of credit today. Um, it be a good conversation. But I'm your host, O'Neill Parker, real estate investor, entrepreneur out of Lafayette, Louisiana. I've been investing in real estate since 2016. Full-time entrepreneur since 2020. Do all things real estate, but love passive income, love rentals. I'm not on a leverage to wealth. I leverage where they are currently in life to get wealthy in real estate, and that's me. Uh, we got just me today. You know, Byron had a uh, a death in the family, so it's just gonna be me. Uh, you know, sh- shout out to Byron. Shoot prayers this way. You know, if you can, be, that is much needed right now. But we got a uh, flame man. What's going on, flame? Man, what's happening? What's going on with you? What's up, man? What's up, man? Welcome to the show, man. It's our first time having you. I know you're no stranger to the platform, but it's the first time on the YouTube, man. What's going on? For sure, man. Ain't too much, man. Um, I'm in North Carolina today, so good energy, good vibes out this way. Give give us a little slight introduction, man. So some people don't know you, man. It's cool. Um, for you guys that don't know me, um, my name is Flame Newton, um, and I kind of get into um, some logistics later. But um, Flame Newton, I uh, live out in Phoenix, Arizona. That's where I live at. That's where I reside at. Um, but pretty much. Uh, I'm known as America's number one credit educator. Um, travel this globe, uh, do all conferences, conventions, workshops, seminars, uh, you name it. I've been there uh, from the FICOs to the credit cons to, to the Marriott Convention to the Intels to pretty much everywhere from, from that angle. Um, I'm a person that um, fights on uh, you guys' behalf when you guys are probably sleeping or doing other things in life, um, dealing with uh, the government. And a lot of the issues that we have uh, pertaining to that. Um, and just granted getting uh, information and bring it back to our community uh, so we can leverage it from, for our main point. Love it, love it, love it. So how long you been in the credit space? I've been in the credit space for over 15 years. Um, uh, 15 years I've been in this credit space. But um, to be honest with you, it hasn't always been the correct way so i got into it in the back door game the back door yes what would what, the back door look like <laughs> well, um <laughs> uh, so first off i like i always like to make sure that we don't have i don't like i don't like secrets right i don't like yeah whisper, man you know i don't like secrets either man i, I, I don't like, like I don't, I don't, yeah you know what i mean i like to lay it all <laughs> on the ground so um so it ain't no hidden text messages somebody texting somebody now and all that kind of stuff and, yeah. and this, that, and the third. So let's put it all on the floor. And I think this is a great way for us all to communicate. Um, and that is, um, I was I was actually known as one of the most despicable human beings that was ever created, all right? Um, despicable meaning that uh, one of the worst guys that you can ever meet. Um, and so you was one of the worst guys, somebody, uh, talking about a lady comedian or just anybody in general? Just in general, man, I was a, I was a fucking, I, I was, uh, excuse my language, I was a douchebag, man. I was one of the, I, I, I was, I, I was, I was that. Um, and the reason I said I came in the back door, because I didn't come in the credit game pertaining to, um, I had bad credit and I fixed my credit up and become some type of a credit professional or credit guru or something like that. I don't have those accolades, right? Nor do I have any accolades of where I went to like Harvard, Yale, or even Brown to get some type of um, some professional schooling of, of education pertaining to this financial and credit game. I don't have that neither. Um, and the reason I was main, named the most despicable because I was a guy who came in the credit game because I stole identities. That's right. I know, I know what you're oh, saying. Oh, identity theft. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, what's shit? Since you, t- <laughs> since you, you know, since we're on that, oh, um, you know, like, what made you get into that identity theft game? Like, you, you, life wasn't going the way you wanted. You wanted more money. Like, what was the reason that you got into that identity theft situation? Oh, for sure. So, I got into it based upon it was definitely a monetary thing. Um, I didn't even realize what I was doing when I was doing it, kind of, sort of. Um, I was dealing with a group, um, and 
what happened was um, I'm a why kid for one. So if you ever know what a why kid O'Neill is, that's a person that's always going to ask the question, why? After why? Thing. So you can't just tell me anything. I'm always yeah. going to why you to sleep to try to get to the to the meat. Nitty gritty. Of, yeah, to the nitty gritty. You know what I mean? And so when they was throwing away credit, um, they was considered with, 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 with credit scores and those type of things. But as I was going around and as I, as I was getting deeper into this stuff, it was the why. Why you can't use this credit? Oh, because it's bad. And this is the credit score. And so that why came deeper. And then I got into the game because I did something that the government said they never seen, heard, or even done before. And that was, I was a person that just didn't steal identities. I stole people that only had bad credit. So that was something that they'd never seen before, right? I right. only stole credit. And that's why I said from that angle. So, you know, you hear identity theft for the most part. Most people think I'm going to steal somebody's identity who has good credit, clean credit, because you can use it. So what was the reason that you were stealing identities for bad credit? I, I don't understand that part. Okay. Um, and, and, and this is where it kind of gets real technical in here, right? Um, yeah. And that is because even though that I was stealing the bad credit, I found out some unusual tactics around this. There's two types of, of credit that I want uh, you and your audience to know. There's one that is actually called bad credit, right? And then there's another type of credit, which is called life credit, right? Um, and, and there's a complete difference between the two. Um, bad credit is when somebody pays 30 days and then 30 days they don't pay. Then they pay 60 days and then they pay 90 days they don't pay. You see what I'm saying? It's a pattern of paying, not paying, paying and not paying, right? So again, right. it's paying, not paying, paying and not paying. That is what we call essentially that is bad credit. But then you have something what we call life credit. Life credit is where you can look at an individual and for six months of their life, they didn't pay anybody. You see what I'm saying? They didn't care who it was. They weren't paying you. They didn't care who you, what you represented, how you, how, where you came from. They did not pay you, right? It's because something happened in the course of life, right? What are those things that could have happened? A sickness. Maybe it was a divorce. Maybe it was the fact that somebody didn't be able to see their children, right? Maybe they lost a job. Right. It was maybe it was a death in the family. There are so many different things that we can all correlate together and say these things are just about life. You know what I mean? And you can't pinpoint that particular element of it. And so when I looked at a credit report and even though it had a bad credit score, now watch this, O'Neill, even though it had a bad credit score, it was a pattern of behavior that I saw. So I knew that if I tackled on in that particular area. They had all the accounts in the world. They probably had about 25 accounts, right? But the fact that they didn't pay anybody for those six months, those six months, right, means something happened in life. And at that point, that's when I went back and reverted into the Y kid and became more of an investigator on that particular person, which now opened up a whole rim. Wow. So once, once you, you noted that, so you were still in, I mean, the identity that you're stealing, you was doing the life and not the bad credit, or you was doing the bad credit. Which, which one? Because now we more, know the difference. Yeah, and, and, and that was more of the life credit because I knew that if I could tackle on in that one particular area, I knew that it opens up the it opens up the world back for him again. You see what I'm saying? So when right. I seen that part of it, I was just like, well, it's it's easier to maintain when you see six months in a row as opposed to you seeing 30, 90, 60, 30. And I did those as well. For sure I did, you know, <laughs> but because I'm going to get the money. I see something and I could tackle it and I could just see a vision and I'm gone. Oh. Yeah. So so once you once you took the identity, like what was the reason for doing that? What you do? Like you went buy something, you went buy a car house, you, you leverage it to get capital. Like what was the exact reason that you took somebody's identity? Yeah. Um, and, and this is where it kind of gets ugly a little bit. Right. But this is what you want. Right. This is. Yeah. Uh, we like the real. And ugly. Yeah. So. Um, so when you when, I, when I'm taking the credit, I didn't realize what I was doing. So all of this stuff that I'm doing all went back to the word why. So every time that you hear me talk this morning, you're always going to hear me convert back to the word why. 
I remember me sitting inside of banks. And one of the first thing that I was I was thinking about was, OK, well, I'm trying to get a loan. I'm trying to get a credit card. I didn't, just didn't know what to do. And then this is before the era where everything is pretty much online on the constant. You know, you can do everything online. now. This was times when you actually had to go into the place. Right. You had to, you had to sit in the facility. Um, and so as I'm as I'm there, I began to have conversations with uh, the people that I that was there. Right. And and I was always confused about the people that worked in the bank. Right. I thought that the banker was the person. Right. If, if you too thought that the banker was the person, somebody go into a chat or something while since this is live and, and put a number one in the chat. If you thought the banker was the, the main person. Right. That, that's that one thing that I thought. Right. But it wasn't um, it wasn't the banker. Right. The banker would always input information and that would come from someone else. And that person was called an underwriter, right? And then I had to find out where the underwriters were. And so that was one of my tackle points. I had to find where they were at and I had to go to these places where they were at. And I didn't know where they were at. So when I found out that I called them one day and they said it was at a convention. And so I ended up going to a convention. And so all of these things comparable to that. And then that's what allowed me to, to get into it and getting and learning more about it. And then it was the, then I was able to get the, the funding from that. And then I had to watch funding because the money is coming, 15,000, 10,000, 2,500, you name it, that, that was what was coming. So then from that point, then you start to do other things with it, whether it is um, uh, one of the main things I did on it, which is crazy, was um, I did uh, clubs, right? And I thought clubs mm. was a way to watch the money and stuff like that. So, yeah. Hey, man, I'm, I'm going to say the situation you did, you know, at least you did it to make money. You know, a lot of people... Still, I did it to buy big houses and cars because I know somebody uh, that's close to my family. He did the same thing, but he was buying cars and houses. Like he would never miss a payment, so nobody ever knew that he stole somebody. I didn't. I don't know how he got caught up. Something happened, but he was living a, a nice life for about ten to fifteen years by stealing people's identity, buying houses, cars, and all that. Hmm. Sure. But, um, and, and those things happen. Uh, you you get in you get into it. Um, but I was, I'm a person that's always trying to figure out. And then I got into it a little more and found out the different ways of it, like understanding, uh, what credit can do, right. Having good credit and you just attach it. That's all it was. O'Neal. That was when the game changed was attachment. You just keep attaching it. Everything was an attachment. Everything was an like attachment. That. Let's, let's, let's get to an article real quick, man. We like to talk about articles because, you know, the truth of what's going on is a stat, is a stat that a lot of us don't even think about. Uh, let's see if we can make it big real quick. All right, so let's look at the average credit score. This is the thing that's the truth that nobody likes to look at. All right, so in 2022, the average credit score in the U.S. determined by FICO. Go up a little bit. In FICO, we're going to talk about that as well. So there's 714, which classified as good FICO. Intrigued by demographic trends into data, we explain how average credit scores vary by across from age, race, and state. So if you can go down a little bit, of course, we're going to talk about us, our folks, black people. All right. Credit score ranges. We got very poor, 300 to 579. We got poor, 580 to 669. We got fair, 601 to 660. Good, 670 to 739, very good, 740, 799, exceptional, 800 plus. Of course, we're going to break that down, too, because just because these scores look good don't mean that it's really good. All right? Most Americans' credit scores fall into good and very good categories. Over 46% of Americans have credit scores 750 plus, while others around 15% have credit scores below 600. So let's go down. They say So a lot of people credit score rose during COVID. Why do you think that was, uh, Flynn? Um, so let's 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 get into the bump a myth, and I'm gonna come right back to it. And I think that's yeah. A let's great do point. it. Let's do it. And I'm, I'm sure that, I'm sure you you got a lot of talking points just from reading that just just right there. Yeah. yeah. So so here's the here's the thing, right? So when it that was one of the things that I thought as well, right? So me coming into the game, I always thought that it was the credit score. I always thought it was the credit score. Credit score is. You thought it was score. the numbers. Yeah, I thought three it was numbers. The numbers. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. But when that, then I found out there's only three people that cares about the numbers. It's the media, the government, and the mall. Again, let me say that again. It's the media, the government, and the mall. Again, it is the media, the government, and the mall. 
Notice what I did not say. I did not say banks or did not say lenders. Why don't why is that not as important? Because what I happen to know is it's more important for the things that are on the credit profile than it is the credit score. Again, it's more mm. important for the things that are on the credit profile than a credit score. So what type of accounts does a person have? Right. Who are those accounts with? Right. How active are those accounts? How long have you had those accounts? Those are the things that matters, because what we can actually do, O'Neill, is we actually can create and we actually can create an, an, an identified credit score by doing things to enhance the credit score um, or surgically enhance. Right. This is where you can actually put a BBL on a credit score. Right now, how can you put a BBL on a credit score? You got trade lines that people can buy with trade lines and all of these things like this that can actually uh, enhance their credit score by using techniques such as authorized users or piggybacking off of an accounts. And we'll talk about that later on as well. But these are things that they can enhance their credit score. So a person going into it, right, they got to understand that there's two methods of measurements to this. One is when you start talking about the measurement of, of, of when you start talking about underwriting. One is a manual underwriting and one is an automation underwriting. When you start to go up in numbers, see how this is going on here? When you start yep. to go up in numbers, when you go from that five thousand to that ten thousand to that to that fifty thousand to that hundred thousand, you get out of the automation and then you get into a manual. The manual underwriting only means that somebody's taking a look at it with their eyes. So they're not they're not caring about a credit score; they're caring about the contents that's on the credit profile. And that's what really matters: the credit profile. The, but the credit. us as individuals, not really knowing about credit, not really knowing. Not even really having financial literacy. That's all we really care about is uh, the, the the credit score, the, the eight hundred, the seven hundred and fifty. But if your profile is terrible, that shit don't even matter. <laughs> it don't, you know? man. And it, it, hey, you can't even say it better, man. That yeah, man, listen, it don't matter. It don't matter, not at all. You know what I mean? And that's what I think the people are kind of like being shocked by. It. Like when you start to understand that you can actually have, I've. Listen, I'm telling you right now, it's a part where you can have a 750 credit score and get denied and get denied. But you can mm. actually have another person come right behind you and have a 680 and get approved. That is 70 points. 70 points. And the ignorant person is confused and don't know why. And they probably got five trade lines on there, and that's it. They don't have nothing else. They got five trade lines. That's it on their credit. And they're trying but to it, figure out why they're getting denied. <laughs> yeah. And then here's the other thing, too, right? And I think this is where it kind of, this is kind of the stuff that really opens up and goes to a whole different level, is that when you see that even with they having the credit scores, are they understanding what credit score that they're getting? Say what, Flame? Back that up. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, you got you got to back that up. Back that up. Back that up. <laughs> what different type of credit scores do they have? Since you okay. talked, oh. you brought it up. Okay, cool. I want you to understand that there's three different there's three different scores. There are three different types of credit scores, right? The first type of credit score, as I want you guys to understand, there's a company, and shout out to the company because they 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 show a lot of stuff to you. But let's talk about it because I think they need to be talked about. And that company is called Credit Karma, right? Have you, Which we all know about. <laughs> if you guys heard of Credit Karma out there, man, go put a number one in the chat, man. Let me just yeah, see let's chat. see it. Let's see it. Let's so see, since, you, since you're talking about Credit Karma, what type of credit scoring do they give us? It's called Vantage Credit, right? Yeah, Vantage Score. So Vantage, Vantage Score, the way that they calculate their score and what it does it mean, they have six different metrics that creates a Vantage Score. Right. And, and, and when you do a Vantage score, a lot of times that score can be confusing because from a there's another credit scoring, which is called FICO. Fair eyes. That's and, and you know, if, if I got if I say anything like I'm biased towards FICO because I right. <laughs> so when it comes to FICO, FICO is used. Now, watch this, O'Neill. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to drop a head hot for you right now. FICO is yeah. used by 97 percent of all lending Listen to what I'm saying. Lending institutions. 97% of all lending institutions use FICO. I got a question though, Flam, before we even go too far. You know what I'm saying? Most <laughs> people in this chat, you know what I'm saying, don't know what FICO is. That's all we think is on my credit karma say I got 720. 
my, you know, they go to a bank. Uh, my credit karma say I'm 720. They go get a, new, a brand new car. They say, hey, do you know about what your credit is? My credit karma is a 720. So people, we got to realize we sound crazy when we say my credit karma is this. You you know, when you when you go into a lending institution, a bank, a car dealership, you sound ignorant when you say my credit karma or my capital one says my 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 chase app said my credit bro that nobody look nobody cares about that flame just said over 90 percent of lenders use fico 97 nobody uses credit karma credit karma is free for a reason <laughs> but 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 it's a but this is what i want people to understand what they are credit karma is a credit karma is posed as a credit as some part of credit, what credit karma actually is. So let's understand. You remember I go back to the wild part, right? Yeah, what credit karma it. is, is they are marketing website. Mm -hmm. They're marketing. They're marketing, right? So how does a free credit site, now somebody asked this question for, watch this, watch this, watch this. Hold on, hold on. I said, I see my <laughs> man, Mr. Ice in the building. Watch this, I get excited now. How does a free credit, listen now, I'm, this, is, this is documented. How talking about a, real stuff right now. Yeah. How does a free credit site make over half a million? I mean, make over half, um, close to half a billion dollars. How? Mm. I know how. <laughs> every every time you open Selling the app, stuff. Every time you open the app, and you're highly likely to get approved for this. And what you do? Let me go ahead and click this. Click that link. And so that's the <laughs> that's the metrics of it. The metrics of it is being able to click that link. Once you're able to click that link, that app, so let's go over this thing because us three up here and I'm going to show this to you. I want to see this thing in real time. What happens is you got Mr. You got Mr. Ice who's up here with me, right? Mr. Ice is a person and let's call him for the purpose of this story. Let's call him Capital One. I like that name. Let's call him Capital One. So Capital One on this side over here, right? You have a person named Flame, which is I'm in the middle and let's give me a name. Let's call me Credit Card right and what happens is you got o'neill that's on the left hand side o'neill is the sales rep to them right he has to keep the things going for credit karma so o'neill is with me he's got to keep the things going to credit karma so what o'neill does is tell um uh, capital one saying hey we're going to make sure that we drive more traffic to your particular website and so therefore this is what it's going to do so they have a list of criteria when you first get on Credit Karma. Don't believe me? Go to it and watch and see it. What is the list of criteria that they ask you? They ask you, what did you come on here for? You would tell them saying, hey, I'm coming to look for a home mortgage. I'm coming over here to look for a car. I'm over here to look for a credit card. I'm looking for a personal loan. You will have a variety of different reasons about why did you come onto that particular website and they will bubble it in for you to get you a choice. But the choice that you're picking is the choice that they made for you. So once you tell them that what you're looking for, any other product that actually comes to our Credit Karma channel. Now, what happens now is the more that you pay Credit Karma, the higher that you move above the board. So if somebody else comes in in this particular category and says, hey, you know what? I'm looking for an auto loan. Now, what happens is now Capital loan, capital One Auto Loans is, is paying me such and such amount of money to advertise on my particular website. So guess what? If they're, if they're paying a lot of money to advertise on my website, when somebody asks me, who should I get a credit, uh, um, who should I get approved from? Guess what I'm going to do? One. I'm going to tell you that you need to go to Capital One because the more clicks that you get on Capital One, the more Capital One want to spend with me. The thing about it is that when you get over here with Capital One, Capital One, the, the more times that people can apply for Capital One, the better chance that they get an approval and the better chance of getting approval, which means more money that they can actually make. See how this worked in there? Hope somebody caught that. Woo. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's a whole lot of game right there. And that's that's like the real... Thing that credit karma is doing and if you don't really know that you will fall into the trap every time thinking you get approved for stuff getting your credit pool getting your three to five uh points dropped because credit karma saying hey you 90 percent approval you may get approved for this you fill it out and you get denied every time and you're trying to figure out why you're getting denied why your credit keep dropping why you got all these hard inquiries and now you can't really get approved for the thing that you've been wanting because you got bamboo Oh, got bamboozled. You already know how that goes. <laughs> you got bamboozled because you wasn't properly educated. You didn't take out the time to learn. You just got big eyed, googly eyed. If you see approval, you go ahead and put it in. 
<laughs> well, good morning, Don, man. What's up, man? We we ain't we, we ain't even acknowledge you since you've been here. What's going on? That's okay, man. That's all right. Listen, uh, you got flame in the room, you got you in the room. Um, and I'm just sitting back, you know, just for opportunity to uh, talk about you know because flame can get you you know he can get you the credit he he can he can tell you how he can tell you how to do, uh, w- what you need to have he, he can break down for you your your credit profile he can tell you you know what percentages you need to have here and have there but I'm so glad I'm so glad that flame called me once and said Don I'm coming to Alabama <laughs> how would you like to come and this is when you know hardly anybody knew me. And he says, well, how'd you like to be on the stage with me in Alabama? Uh, because I'm going to be talking about credit. I said, yeah, I want to be there. Because not only do we need to talk about how to get it, we need to know how to use it properly. Right. And so, because that word leverage really means something. You want to put the least amount of effort into something to get the maximum amount of benefit. And I'm telling you, When it comes to credit, most of us pay exactly what the bank wants, and we don't know that we are in charge of how much interest we actually pay. Not the interest rate, the actual cost of borrowing money needs to be a part of all conversations when it comes to credit. And that's why I show up. I agree with that. And Again, we don't know the interest cost. We barely know what the interest rate is. So we, we definitely got to get deeper into that. Um, before we even get that far, man, I, I want to break this down real quick. Let me let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, Ruby, if you can pull up that article. There we go. Scroll down to the bottom. Yeah. We got to talk about it. Man. We got to talk about it. Go down a little bit more. All right. Go up a little bit, a little bit. Got you. All right, boom. Credit by race. Oh, boy. In 2021, the highest score recorded by white communities was 727, followed by Hispanic communities, 667, black communities at 627, and we got Native Americans at 612. Again, there's another one, another statistic. Black people all the way at the bottom. But the, the Hispanic here's something though. came in after us and then passed our ass up. <laughs> Go ahead, Flair. Nah, I was just saying, right? So I want to stay right here before because I was in Congress on, on this particular issue right here, right? And sometimes these numbers, they are there, but they, sometimes they're different. And let me explain why. Yeah. This thing about our community, right? What is in our community and what do you see? You will see actually automobiles in our community, but you will also see dealerships in our community, right? They will be called buy here, pay here lots, right? And so what happens is they will go to these lots, right? And they will go get these vehicles from these lots. But the thing about it is these particular business owners that's in that particular area don't know about how to actually report credit or report data on the individuals that's buying from them. So people will actually make on-time payments to those particular types of companies, right? Because never reporting them. But they never report them. So they're not getting reported data. But one thing they will report, though, watch this. They will report the negative data. The, the moment that you don't pay is the, the moment that they will uh, the, the moment that they will pay. And those are the type of things that I'm that those are the type of things that I fight for when I'm in Congress is because I'm saying to them, I'm saying, listen, a person should not have the uh, have the opportunity to report anything negative if they don't have the same opportunity to report something positive. So those 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 type of things. And Going back over the two things before, so I need everybody to write now. Listen, if, there, if there's ever a time that you need to bring a pen and a pad and there's ever a time that you need something, I want you to take these two things and they're going to roll coincidentally with, with, with Mr. Don. you got to understand the two rules in credit. And if you follow these two rules, then you're going to understand about how this race compatibly changes instantaneously. Now, what are those two things? Number one, the very first rule of credit that I want you to never forget. Listen, if I pass away tonight, I never want you to forget these words. The very first thing that you got to do is is how much how much does the money cost if you're borrowing money it comes at a cost 
Mr. Don's going to get in that in a second. If you borrowing money, it comes at a cost. You got to know how much you're paying on that money. You must know how much you're paying on that money. That, that Knowing how much you're paying on that money is a huge thing, right? So when you don't know how much you're paying on that money, therefore, you're, you're, you're applying more money to your interest as your interest costs, right? You're applying more money to there. So therefore, you have less money to put on the principal, and it pulls you further and further away from being paid for something and gets you more and more tired for you not to even pay for it at all. So that's how we fall into that gap. The number two thing, the number two thing is that you only use debt to create you more money. That's it. There is no, other, this ain't up for debate. This ain't you go, then I go, then you could talk and I could talk. No, there is no other way to use debt unless it's making you more money. That is it. So if you follow those two, oh my bad, I'm getting carried away, man. <laughs> if you follow those two rules, man, that keeps us out of that component of, of that downward statue. Because what we're doing, O'Neill, is, is the, the money that we're getting in our community, and you know what I'm talking about, is that we're using the money to look like we got money. Say it again. Ooh. Money to look like you got money, as opposed to using the money to make you more money. Wow. We, now, I think we got to talk a little deeper on that man, because it's the truth of our reality. You know, good, good credit. First thing we want to do is make it, we want to leverage that credit to make ourselves look like we have something we really don't. And that's what we tend to mess up. You know what I'm saying? We, we want to impress other people. We want to impress others. We want to buy stuff we know we can't afford. You know, we're looking at the payment. The payment is five hundred. Oh, I got an extra five hundred. We don't look that. We don't look at the interest. We don't look at the the interest cost. You know what I'm saying? We just looking at five hundred. I got an extra five hundred. I always wanted it. You don't need it. You go ahead and buy it. And then you you end up after you purchase it. Six months later, you you end up pissed off that you bought it. Now you start missing payments. You are messing up your credit. And now you're in a messed up position. Can we talk about that for a second? Because this is the reality of our situation. Did I say anything wrong, Flame or Don? Not at all, not at all. Flame is in an expert position to talk about that um, and to talk about how people use credit to buy. Now, this is a contradiction in terms, but you know how we use the term uh, depreciating assets. How can it be an asset and depreciating at the same time? I don't know. So <laughs> we, may, we may need to stop using that term. But, but taking credit to buy something that is actually not going to appreciate, and that's, uh, that's, that, that's not good. And when you do buy something, uh, you need to be able to manage how much you're paying for the money. You know, because when you, when, you, when you borrow money, you're actually buying it. You're Correct. paying a you, you're paying for that. And so now I'm buying something that is depreciating, plus I'm paying extra for it to get less valuable. I, I don't I don't get it. Don't understand it. So so Don, when you when you look at uh you know at this at, at these this article we had when you see just, you know our community at six twenty seven, what what does that what does that tell you? Or what what feelings and what thoughts come to your mind? Uh, a lack of education. Mm. We need to be educated. And that's why we appreciate shows like this so that we can bring to the forefront education on how lending actually works. You see, the, the, the thing is, is that we're talking about the amortized loan. All right. And the amortized loan has been in the United States since 1936. And a lot of people make a lot of money around that the amortized loan. The amortized loan is the most um, ubiquitous or the, 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 the most uh, well-known financial tool on the planet. And we know absolutely the least about how it works. We're expected to use credit cards, car loans, student loans, mortgages, and what we have heard from the industry is how we should use those things. We're getting educated on these loans by the people who sell the loans. So 
With what edu- good education? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. What kind of education are you going to get from the people Vanessa's who are selling education. the loan? Yeah. So you're on mute, man. Nah, I, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't say it any, man, it's exactly that. It's just, it, you're looking for the people to educate you from the same people that's taken from you, right? And so therefore, they're going to be able to control the education by the thoughts that they put inside of you, right? And so those are the things that we always are talking about is saying, okay, well, hell, well, how about we, how about you understand about what we're going to do with this credit from the, from the beginning, right? And I think the one thing that we, we, we've lacked uh, overall, I think the one thing, and it's a one word, it's a four letter word, right? And that word is called plan. People want to go get the money, but they don't have a plan to what they're going to do with the money. Right. And so when you start to lack that particular plan, I've heard somebody make a statement like this before, Mr. Don. They said, well, you know, a business can fail in the first three years. I said, that's a failure. I said, businesses, I said, you're supposed to be able to have a plan so you can manipulate so we can find out where the where the holes at so you can fix those holes along the way. Right. So you shouldn't go in two and three years and find out that you're losing. And then where did they do that at? Right. At that point, your business is turned into a hobby. Right. And understand that when you're leveraging your credit, you got to be able to figure out, man, listen, I got to think, I got to change my whole, continue the process of this is saying that I got to make money off of this, of this process, right? And when you start to understand this, because I was telling O'Neill this earlier, Mr. Don, I was like, it's called an attachment, an attachment, an attachment. You got to be able to attach these things to it to, in order to go to that next level with it. Attaching that credit is a big thing. Attaching that credit to a big thing. You want to get a mortgage, you got to attach your personal credit. You over here want to get started a business, you attach your personal credit. Everything attaches with your personal credit. So if we understand about with if you understand about the value that it holds by having good personal credit, it definitely will take a person to the next level with it, for sure. It takes flame to talk about this, ladies and gentlemen. When we're talking about educated, getting educated on on banks and bank products and and lending and borrowing um that that term banker okay that term banker um do you know that people that- at banks absolutely do not know how loans actually work and they can't give you good advice because they're not trained on how a loan actually works the people who own the bank the people who own the institution know it backwards and forwards, but they're not teaching their employees. What they teach bankers is how to sell products. Am I lying, Flame? No, that's a, that that that's exactly it. From from the from the top to the bottom, is that that's why I was saying that in the positions, like you got you understand about that all those things at the bank. See, O'Neill, let's pause for just a second, and I'm gonna let's share. Pause it. Let, let's break it down. Okay. When you go inside of a, I don't know, a quick trip, right? So you you know quick trip, right? When when you walk inside that quick trip, that gas station, that convenience store, that 7-Eleven, what do you see inside of that store? You can buy yourself a Pepsi, you can buy yourself a Coke, you can buy you some water, you can buy some chips, some candy, you can buy all of these different items that are inside that store. I think what we have to unpack here is the understanding that these banks are just like stores. They're exactly like stores. So all of those things that they have in the bank, those are products. So when you see something that's in there, that's an M M&M and M pack in there. That's a that, that, that's a coke that's in there. All of these things that they have in banks, they are products. They are actually products that when you go into there. So that's why I said, do you know how much it costs? Do you also understand? Now, O'Neill, you travel, you understand about how this works. If you go buy a water from the seven, I mean, from the CVS, right? How much would that water cost you? Just I don't care what the water is. Just call it a design. Let's say two dollars. Two dollars. If I go to the airport, that same water is four twenty nine. It's going to cost twenty nine, and that's the thing that what we that, that's the thing that we we what we harping on, and those are the things that we want people to know about is that that money comes at a different price, no matter I mean at at, at different elements and different at different stages in it, right? And so, but when we know how much that money costs, it changes everything from us, and that's what we own. We want to make sure that we're controlling the cost of the product, right? When we control the, pro- the price of the, the product, it changes the direction in which we end. And so now you understand this type of stuff. So now your mind shift. Now your mind mindset, it, it changes from that component. It starts to change. That's what we own. We're trying to change the mindset of it because now when you look at something, you're like, okay, I bought a car and you bought a car. O'Neill, we bought the same car, work at the same job, got the same family. Why at the end of the, uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm, 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 Mr. Don, I need you to come in here with me. Why at the <laughs> end of the loan did I pay, it's a 30000 
$30,000 car, same color, same everything. It's a $30,000 car. We paid, we both had 60 months on it. Both had, the, we both had all of these things. But at the end of the term, why did I pay $46,000 for a $30,000 car? And you, O'Neill, you paid $34,000 for, for, for a $30,000 car. See, that's the part that they're not talking about. And that money comes out of the household. When that money comes out of the household, it also takes you in different places to saying, hey, mom, I got a field trip that I got to go to. I got to do these things. You can't do it because you're taking money out of the household. The more money that you take out of the household is the more money that you take out of the community. So therefore, we can't even get ourselves wrapped around in the same direction in this. Damn. And we don't even think that deep. We just think it's 500. Let me go ahead and get it. Yeah, mm. not, not at all. We're not thinking that deep at all. And we put ourselves in bad positions, you know, we put ourselves in bad positions for our family, our kids, you know, the kids want to go to soccer, they want to play soccer, but you don't have enough money to let them play soccer because you bought a bad deal two years ago. And you know and what makes it to pay three, four years on that deal. Go ahead. Uh, and you know what makes it so bad, O'Neill, is this. Most people are in the financial situation that they're in, not because they're irresponsible with money. They're in the financial situation they're in because they're following best practices given to us by banks and financial gurus online. Mm. We're following it. We're doing what we've been told and it's not working. And then we're made to feel as if we're doing something wrong because we're following, you know. So for, for instance, when I go to buy a car, all right, when I go to buy a car, I never pay cash for cars. I always borrow the money because I can control how much I pay for the money. Okay. So, and, and so I always get the longest term available. Now, what when you talk, the, the reason for that is because you got more options. When you get the longest term available, then you have a small principal payment. When you have a small principal payment, then you can you can control the loan because when you prepay the loan, that means give the bank money when you want to give them the money, you pay a lot less interest as opposed to following their plan. Now, their plan is based on this. Now, let me ask you something. And I'm a, this is for the entire, your entire audience, O'Neill. How yep. many of us have ever had a class on how this thing works? Not too often. Okay. Not a, not a 1%. Yeah, okay. Have, know, know what amortization is. And this is the formula that does it. All right. And what it does is, is when you amortize something, you don't get one loan. You get, if it's a 60 month loan, it is actually 60, 60 different loans. Every month it turns into a brand new loan. So, That's wild. so what we're doing is we need to find out what does this thing do to the loan so that I can manipulate the loan so it works for me. And so, when, you know, maybe I can come back and give you some examples of why I get a, a the longest term available, why I never get a 15 year mortgage. I always get a 30 year mortgage and I teach my clients how to pay it off in seven. Um, why do we I, I don't buy down the interest rate because the lower the interest rate. Watch this now. The lower the interest rate, you actually make it harder to pay the loan off cheaper and faster when you lower the interest rate. Now, if you stop to think about it, you stop to think about it. It makes sense because the bank is offering it. If the bank were not making money on a certain idea, they would not offer it. So why would your bank, who has only the one product, money, <laughs> and they sell it at different prices, why would they ever offer you a lower price if they're not going to make more money on the back end? We can show you where they make money. So by refinancing, um, you uh, they're, they're making money at least three different it. ways when you refinance. Mm. Okay. Um, when that so, loan all over. Exactly. So what we're being told is if you can lower the you, you can lower your 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 um your rate by two points, refinance, especially, especially people who are, are in 
real estate investing. We need to start paying more attention to those things. Um, so you want to get the longest term, never get a 15 year loan. Um, no, folks, it's easy to figure out what a 15 year payment would be. If you got a 30 year loan, find out what the 15 year payment would be and start making the 15 year payment. If that's all, you know, you don't need permission to have a 15 year mortgage. Just start making the 15 year payment. And if things get tight, you can always drop back to that 30 year payment. So if a bank is giving you something that looks like it's saving money, and here's a key for you, the more money it seems like it's saving you is the more money the bank is going to make off of that, off of that deal. So be careful, get with somebody who's going to be an advocate for you to navigate you through these waters so that when you do everything that you're supposed to do, when you put in that application, you will get approved. Now that you're approved, set the loan up in a way that is going to cost you the least amount of money. You see, my clients pay one third the interest cost of everybody else because they know how to manipulate a loan. You got knowledge. So y'all saying, Basically, just because I've been with a bank for since I was 17, 18, they don't have my best interest at heart. That's what you're saying. Listen, what I what I'm saying is this. Banks so are business. Really- banks are a business. They're a business. They're not your is, friend. Yeah. They're not your friend. They're a business. And, and, and I don't fault them for the business. I love the bank. They got a product I need. I just know how to pay them pennies on the dollar for the use of it. Because listen, we know how to take a page out of somebody else's book. Flame, you've got a couple of books. I got a book. And so we lo- we know that success leaves footprints. So we're always trying to learn from somebody else that's done better. So here's what I'm saying. The biggest, borrow- the biggest borrower in town is your bank. So borrowing money must be okay, all right? They borrow our money. They make big money with that money, and then they pay us pennies on the dollar for the use of our money. Why can't we do Always. the same thing? Ooh. Ooh. So you and know, the reason I brought that up is because, you know, I know y'all hear it. I hear it all the time. You know, I've been with this bank for 20, 30 years. You think they go, you think they go help me out on a real estate loan? You think they go help me out on a car loan? You think they go help me out with a, with a regular loan? Man, those people don't care about you, man. You're an opportunity. You're a number. And if you're not going in there educated, they'll, they'll mess you over every time because you don't know exactly what you're doing. You just want the money so bad. You don't, you don't care about doing the extra research. You don't care about asking certain questions. They say you approve, you cool with it. But at the end of the day, that loan is probably hurting you more than it is helping. But watch this, though, O'Neal. Let's, 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 get, let's get into it, baby. And that is- Yeah, let's get it. When you start talking about the borrowing and the cost of money, as Mr. Dom was just talking about, now we start to get into another. We start to get into another indicator. He, he mentioned it. Let's ride on this, right? And that is that the banks make money off of your money. The banks make money off of your money. So, Flame, what are you talking about? And where are you going with this? The fact that any time that you go into a bank, that's why one of the biggest attributes that you have in a bank is call your initial deposit. So, any time that you guys are opening up in a bank account at a bank, the initial deposit. Say it again with me. Initial deposit. Initial deposit. I mean, initial deposit. Initial deposit. Initial, initial deposit. deposit. In the other deposit, I said the initial deposit. The, That's initial, the most important one. The initial deposit is what you put in the bank when you first open up the bank, right? That is your initial deposit, right? That's why when they tell you with a the bank, they say a minimum of the deposit is a hundred bucks. But there's one line at that bank that can never be altered, never be changed, and never be rigged. And what line is that bank? That is your initial deposit line that when you come into a bank, right? Because it shows you why is that why does that line is so important at a bank? Because a bank gets 10 to 1 odds on every money that you bring in, especially when you start talking about the fractional reserve banking, which means that for every let me say this again, for every dollar that you put into the bank, they're able to borrow 10 times on that. So for you guys to get this particular, say that again, right? But raise the volume. 
time. Let's get it in. I said <laughs> that the bank itself, it borrows 10 times to one. So if that is the case, O'Neill, you walk into the bank. Now, I want you to do it. You're walking into the bank, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to walk into that bank and you're going to give that bank $10,000. The moment that you give that bank $10,000, Mr. Don Daniel is standing in line right behind you. Mr. Don Daniel saying, hey, I, 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 I'm going to borrow some money. And he said, how much do you want to borrow? He says $10,000. So the moment that he gets $10,000, they charge Mr. Don Daniels around about 20% of that money, 15 to 20% of that money, right? And on your end, right, you come get your money at the end of 12 months. That's what I said, at the end of 12 months, right? Mr. Don Daniels comes in there and he pays off his loan on that on the end of that 12 months. What how much did he just pay on that loan? He just paid 1500 to 2000 on that particular loan that he borrowed for ten thousand dollars. You came and picked up your money, and guess what they gave you back? They gave you back ten thousand and one hundred dollars. They gave you back ten thousand one hundred dollars in return. They made fifteen or he made fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars off of Mr. Don, and they're doing this all day, every day. So when you start to understand is this that you're the product when you walk in that bank, and that's why the deposits are so big. That's where there's two things that when you come into the bank account, I never want nobody to forget this. There's one thing that's called transactions. How much see a lot of times people want to walk in the bank and they want to do this talk 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 you ain't got to do all that talking at the bank ladies and gentlemen only thing that you got to do is put some money in that bank account that's your talk you're talking you're talking your talking is when you start to deposit money into that bank account, now you can understand because now you're creating money for them. I can tell you one thing for sure, two things for certain. If you help me make me money, guess what you're going to be? You're going to become an asset to me. So the more money that you become into the bank and you can deposit money into the bank, you become an asset to that bank. And so the more of the story is that you got to create yourself to be an asset as opposed to a liability when it comes to the banking products. When you talk about creating money, Ooh. that's exactly what's happening. I, listen, let's, I, please don't get mad when you hear this because this is the absolute truth. Flame talked about fractional reserve lending. If we did what the banks did, we would be in jail. I must repeat that. If we did what the banks did, we would be in jail. Here's what I mean. Off that $10,000, they can lend out 100000 did you hear me? Based on that $10,000, okay? Because they can lend out for every dollar, they can lend out 10. So when I come behind, when I come behind to borrow $100,000, it's based off the fact that somebody in front of me deposited $10,000. So am I, am I getting real dollars is my point. This is money that they wrote into your account it's not actual dollars. Those dollars are created by the note I sign. I mm. signed a note that I'm going to pay back 10, 100,000 fictional dollars that was based phantom on money. the <laughs> phantom money, based on the fact that somebody deposited $10,000 in front of me. And now I'm going to not only go to pay back 100,000 fictional dollars, I'm going to add my blood, sweat, and tears to that to pay it back with interest, with real dollars that I create from my own blood, sweat, and tears. This is what's happening. So we need to learn what's really going on and what part we play in the whole process. So we the product at the end of the day. We're the natural resource the that's we're the natural resource that's being mined, like a gold mine, <laughs> like a copper mine, like a diamond we mine. We the gold in the we fools gold. Let me say it like that. We fools gold. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> that's what's happening. If y'all enjoying today's conversation, today's content, man, put, put like the hit the like button, man. Put the flame in the chat because this is this is going crazy, man. I'm having a good time. I'm learning all kind of stuff. Make sure y'all hit the flames, hit the flames, put the flame in the chat, hit the like button. Share it out with a friend. This is, this is a great conversation, man. So Ruby, if you can, go back to the uh to the to the um to the article real quick. The other one, the other one, if you don't mind. The uh, let me see. There we go. Credits go by age. So this is important, man. It's important. So let's look at it real quick. So this is from experience. One of the three major credit reporting agencies shows that the average credit scores tend to increase with age. This is not surprising since older people have greater incomes. 
more credit history and more for experience managing credit. So Gen Z, 18 to 24, average credit score is 679. Millennials, 25 to 40 is 687. We've got Generation X, 41 to 56, credit score is 706. Of course, the baby boomers, 57 to 75, 742. Then we got the silent generation, they're 760. So my question to you, Flame, and Don, you could tune in as well. You know, for the, for the Gen Zs and the Millennials, what's your advice or what should they be doing? So instead of having our credit in the low sixes, how can we be in the higher sevens at that early age? Because that's important. Yeah. So let's first understand, we, we know and understand about the credit system and, and about some of those things, but let's get into it, right? So one of the one of the first attributes is just like how you come in here now and, and we getting uh, information pertaining to this, we also got to go to the next level, right? And, and, and that is understanding that this money comes at a cost. Not only does it come at a cost, we got to make sure that when we start to, as, as they start to go up in the ladder, right, they understand what type of credit that they actually get. Sometimes these folks are getting meaningless credits, man, meaningless credits. They get meaningless credits, right? They're running around here. They're running around here with, with, with a Coles credit card. You're running around here with a Victoria's Secret credit card. Huh. Those, are meaningless, That's bad. Are, those are meaningless credit cards. What we're saying is, I'm saying, hey, what we got to understand is we got to understand the value of what stuff is. So when I'm saying the value, what credit card should you have and what the, and, and, and where should you be at, right? One is that you got to understand about these about, about the categories that this stuff is in. American Express and Chase, they the big dogs on the block. You got to also understand about your Power 8 banks, right? Your power eight banks, right? What are your power eight banks? Do you even know them, right? What, it, do you even know them, right? Those are your Chase, your Wells Fargo, your Bank of America, your City, your Capital One, your U.S. Bank, your Truist and PNCs. Those are your big dog banks on the block, right? We was looking up last night, shout out to bro was in the building. Listen, we was looking up last night and one of the things is, I was explaining to them, I was like, listen, um, there's over 70,000 different branches in America, right? Out of 70,000 different branches in America, there's over 4,000 different banks in America. Out of the four thousand different banks in America. Did you actually know that Chase has four thousand, has over four thousand branches? So why you don't have a bank with Chase? I don't understand this. You can understand that they're the big dog on the block. So when we start to get into those comparison attributes, when we start to do these things, we got to understand the categories and the stepping stones in which the measurements are. What are you getting with your credit, right? What are you getting? What are you purchasing with your credit? Are you when, when I look at when I when I see those Victoria's Secret credit cards, or if I see those cold credit cards, or anything of that nature, right? Right? Those are what you call consumer spending habits, right? Those are not used. You can't go to, I can't go get something, make some money off of it, and, 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 and Victoria's Secret is going to give me some money off of it. It's not going to happen. Like you understand about your reward points, about understanding about your flight. You understand about all of these different categories that you're in, but now you're able to maximize off of it, right? Now you're able to take your credit and now you're able to monetize off of it. That's why I said it's the two rules. Number one, how much does that credit cost you? And always use that credit to make you more money. And the way that they're going to, the, the way that they're going to be able to up their credit score in that particular category is that they got to face issues which surround them from the beginning. Again, say that again. What we're known to do now is that when we have an issue, people try to run from that issue. What are some of those issues? Some of those issues may be a late payment, maybe a charge off, and you don't want to confront that issue until you need that issue. You know how many times people come in, O'Neill, and start talking about how, to, how when they want to fix their credit? When they want to come fix their credit? When they're, when they're trying to go buy a car, when they're trying to go buy a home? These are things that we should late. be on top of from the beginning instead of sitting around and waiting and stuff like that. So we attack the issues that come at us at first. Then after we attack those issues what will come at us, now we start to bring those to the forefront and now we start to maximize it for our use so we can make more money off of it. I love it. I love it. So so Flame, what would your advice be to the young people? Would So would it be open Chase accounts and focus on the big banks getting credit with them rather than the Victoria's Secrets, the Cons, the Best Buys? You know, the very first thing that I'm telling somebody before they get in any, in, any, in any genre, and I start right here. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear the words that come out of my mouth. And I need you to put this money inside. I need you to put this word inside of the chat. The number one thing that they got to do, O'Neill, is making sure that they can make some money. Money is the number one thing in this category. How do you make money? You got to have a consistent flow of money. What does that consistent flow of money talk about? Do you got a job? First of all, this we're not going to discredit the job. Shout out to all my jobs. Matter of fact, if you got a nine to five in here right now, if you got a nine to five in here right now, put the, put the numbers nine five in the chat right now. If you got a job, 
job. Shout out to the folks that's, get, that's getting up off of their ass and going to get a job. A job is very important. A job, right? Do you have a job? Do you have a business that's making money? How are you bringing money in? Do you uh, you say that you don't have a job? Do you got unemployment? If you don't have unemployment, what do you do? Do, do you get? alimony what how are you bringing money in you got to bring money in one of four categories daily weekly bi-weekly or either monthly in one of them four categories you got to be bringing some money in because don't none of this credit stuff work don't none of this fixing this credit stuff work nothing starts unless you actually have some actually monetary coming in now once you have that monetary coming in now what we got to understand is next is what we got to do now is we're going to clean up the credit from that from that attribute right and then we're going to make sure that we're utilizing the people that are around us you just you it was you that said this O'Neill. i can't make this up we were talking about the older generation the 70 six years old and up. We talked about the 55 years and old and up. That's our parents and grandparents, right? They've already established good credit, right? They've already been there because you can see the disparity between the scores, between the younger and the older. So get what, guess what you can actually able to do? This system entitles you that you can actually do a thing called piggybacking or becoming an authorized user onto their accounts. So therefore, what I would do is I would attach myself to an older generation, putting myself on one of those credit accounts. Now, at this point, I can enhance my score, which I did. I surgically enhanced it from that major, but then that allows me to have a stronger courage of going to a chase and being able to get approved because they already dealt with somebody that's in your family that's already got a chase card. Now that they can see that maybe it's the birds of the feather that can rock together. Maybe there's maybe the son and the father are just the same with great credit. And so they will want to allow you. But when they want to see the same first is that the parents said, hey, you can use the credit. So they would attach themselves to you. So those are the things that we got to do. We're going to go into it first by adding things onto the credit. Then we're going to go into the, then we're going to go over to there so we can go get these products that they have at these at, at these at these bankings. Jeez. So number one, man, you got to focus on the money, man. You got to get some income coming in. Oh, income right? is by far, man. You got to have some income coming in because none of this stuff works. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you heard that story about it. You don't got to have money to make money. You ain't got to have money to make money. There's a word that I can't say on here, and it starts with the letter. It starts with the letter bull. I said the letter bull. Right, and then you can figure out what the rest of it is. <laughs> Listen, Man. credit credit is not for people who don't have money. Credit, credit is for people that don't need it. It's for people who have assets. If you can't pay it back, don't borrow it. Period. End of story. Man. I'm not gonna lie, bro. You drop a lot of heat, man. I hope I hope they're paying attention. <laughs> hope they're paying attention. But let's look at this real quick. I know you mentioned earlier. You said 90 plus lenders. What they care about is FICO score, not the Credit Karma score, not your Capital One credit score. They care about the FICO score. So, Flame, if you can break it down, in Ruby, if you can't click to the top, what is FICO score? If you can't break that down real quick, Flame, what is, what is the FICO score? Okay, so... For the people that don't know. Yeah, so first off, let's understand what FICO is. FICO is a fair Isaac corporation, right? And when it comes to FICO... When it comes to, when it comes to FICO, um, FICO is a predictability company. Let me say that again. It's a predictability data company. Again, it's a predictability company. They can predict stuff before it happens. Do you guys, um, let's start off with this and this and, and O'Neill, let's open this thing up. Let's, let's put the fire. We, 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 we need to open it way up, man. Open them, okay. open them things up. So my question to you guys right now, and I want to see in the chat right now, tell me who do you think is FICO biggest customer? Who is FICO biggest customer? Just tell me in the chat, everybody. I just want to hear from you. There's no wrong answer from you, but it is a wrong answer. But I want to hear from you to see who is FICO biggest customer. Who do you think it is? Somebody think. Me who they think it is. I, I want to I want to follow that chat one time. If you I want to know who do you think FICO biggest customer is? Who is FICO biggest customer? This is gonna be very good. Who do you think is FICO biggest customer? Everybody's putting it in the chat. Who do you think it is? Who is FICO biggest customer? Michael said it's the banks. Somebody says black people. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Eugene's been, Eugene's been around me too damn long. That's right. Eugene Adams got it right, man. Shout him out. Right? And the reason is, it's the NFL. The NFL is actually their biggest is actually their biggest client, right? Now, why is that? Because they predictability. They, they do the predictability. Who, who does the NFL pay out? They pay out to millionaires. Think about what I'm saying. They got a whole roster of people, of millionaires, that they keep paying out over and over and over again. So, therefore, they want to make sure that they're creating and help their biggest investment to these things. Right. When you see the stadiums that's being filled in, you start to understand about how do those people get into the stadiums. So FICO is a predictability company. It's a three digit score, but goes from 300 to 850, which means there's 550 points in between. So if it's 550 points in between. Right. What are those 550 points and how do you guys correlate those 550 points to get to where you're trying to go to? Right. So the very first thing is, is that I want you guys to oh, my bad. Talk to me. My bad. <laughs> My, my bad, my bad. You yeah, really, really got me. Really got me. Really. Hey, y'all, can y'all do me a favor, right quick, man? Because I need some energy, for y'all. Can y'all put a number nine in the chat? Can y'all just put a number nine in? It? Can y'all put a number nine in the chat for me? I need your energy right now. When, when you get excited, you talk fast, man. When you get excited, you talk fast. I, I ain't gonna lie. I be the same way. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Uh, oh man, y'all are great. This is so, the passion, man. That's all it is. The passion. So what it is, is that if the score goes from 300 to 850, so that means there's 550 points in between, right? So if there's 550 points in between, let's figure out where those 550 points are coming from, right? And so once these are the type of things that when I got into the why kid scenario, I had to figure it out. So the very first thing that I want you guys to know, because if you take in this information that I'm about to give you right now, this is the cheat code. You want a cheat code? You're going to get it right. The cheat code is think like a lender. Again, that's called think like a lender. I need somebody to write in the chat. Think like a lender. You have to think like a lender. Think like a lender. I'm going to say that again. Think like a lender. Okay, again, that is called think like a lender. So how does the lender think? The very first thing that you want to do just before anything is that you got to understand how do they get paid? They get paid off of lending out money and people paying them back the borrowed money that they lend out. So guess what the number one thing for you should be, right? The, the number one criteria for this is making sure that you pay your bills on time. Making sure you pay your bills on time is 35% of your score, which is 192.5 points, which, which, which only you go back to that chart if you want to, uh, right? It's 192.5 points, right? So when you understand that component, right, that it's 192.5 points of it, right, that's paying your bills on time. The number two thing, right, is how much of that debt is owed back versus how much have you borrowed, Right. That's called your debt to credit ratio, your debt to credit ratio, your debt to credit ratio is 30 percent of your score. And that's roughly one hundred and sixty five points. That's roughly one hundred and sixty five points. Then on top of that, then it's the length of time. Now, O'Neill, you showed this to me. I can't make this up. You put it on the screen and you showed it to all of us. And you know what that was? Uh -huh. We started talking about the difference between the ages of what the credit score was. The credit score drastically increased when the people were much older. Was that correct? Right? Yes, sir. So if that is correct, that means that your relationship, the, the longer that you have a credit history, makes a valuable point. That's roughly about 82.5 points. So now once you're getting into that point, now you start to understand about the about being able to, to do a versatile of different things. Do you know that in the NFL, if a running back can come out the backfield, right, and run the ball, right, he gets paid a certain amount of money. But then you got other running backs in the NFL, such as a guy like a Christian McCaffrey. How is he so great? Because he can run. He can also catch. He can also do other things and also block. That makes him a more valuable person. So just like that with your credit, what type of accounts do you have on your credit profile, right? Do you have uh, do you have uh, credit cards? Do you have um, uh, automobiles? Do you have a mortgage? Do you have a variety? You remember we talked about this earlier, O'Neal. Remember we did, right? We talked yes, about sir. this report, about the things that have on your credit report, right? 
that right there, my friend, right, that's your credit mix. That's 10% of your score. That's roughly 55 points of showing that you got so much that, that you can handle anything that comes your way. You're not you're not just good at everybody knows that one guy that got a car and he always makes sure he's he, he always makes sure he get a car every three years and he he can pay that car. You know, he won't do nothing else in life, he's gonna pay that car, right? We know people like that, but that doesn't show them how well they can pay a credit card, right? You want to be able to show that you are diverse in well different areas. And last but not least, we talk about inquiries. Inquiries only meaning are you asking or begging? <laughs> well, what was the difference? What was the difference? <laughs> if I look at your credit profile and you got seven different lenders that you ask for credit for, from, and when you ask for them, I don't see the accounts on your credit profile. That look like you begging, big dog. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if I look on your account and you got three different accounts and you got those three different accounts, that means that you're asking. So you always want to be the, the, the careful of that. And, and the way that you don't put yourself in that predicament is making sure that you got those other four things that we talked about up, 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 up tight and got those ready for it. So we got to be honest, Flame. Nobody like beggars. Nobody like beggars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, nobody like beggars. You know what I'm talking about? We talking about relationships. Nobody like beggars. Banks don't like beggars. Uh, a restaurant don't like customers that big. So and don't be a beggar, man. So let, let's go back to that chart real quick. We need, to, we need to break it down a little further if you can, Ruby. So uh, when we look at um, credit mix, how important is it? Because like you're saying, a lot of people don't, don't be having credit mix. A lot of people are scared to get credit cards. A lot of people are scared to get loans. So what exactly needs to be in the credit mix for somebody? To, so this, let me let me take this back. So when we was talking earlier, if you have an 800 and you're getting denied from loans, it's because you don't have the things that we're looking at. Correct. You just got to you just may have one of those out of those five things. That's why your profile isn't right. And we're going to talk about the different things in a profile so you can have a nice profile so you can get approved for actual loans. So when it comes to credit mix, what type of things should they have on their credit? All right, so let's let's go over this. This is real good now. This is this is this is right up my alley. All right, yeah, so let's, man. yeah, baby boy. Listen, um, it's it's two things, right? It's called installment accounts and it's revolving accounts, right? It's an installment accounts and revolving accounts, and you got to know the difference between the two. Installment accounts mean is set in place and won't move. So what it also means is that if your payment is this this month, it's going to be that payment every month. Some of the examples of what we call installment accounts are things like a um, like a home loan, right? To start the matters off, there is a home loan. That payment that you pay every month of the twenty two hundred dollars that you pay a month for at your home loan, right? That's every month that you have to pay that. Number two on this list, right? Uh, on top of installment accounts is uh, you got also got things such as automobile loans, right? If your payment is six fifty dollars a month in an auto, they put you in a term. They say, hey, this is for 60 months. This is for 360 months. They would tell you how length of time that you have to pay this. Some other things are something like you call a student loan. These are things that we call the installment category, right? Um, uh, those are the things that will be called the installment category, right? So then you got what we call the revolving category. Now, what does revolving mean? Revolving mean that it's always going. It has a start date and does not have an end date, right? It does not have an end date. So what are some things that we call? So now this is where we get real technical and this is where it gets funny, right? What are, what are some things that we call revolving? There are six different types of revolving. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay very close attention here. The stuff that I'm getting ready to inform you about is not found on the internet. It only comes out of flame Newton mouth, and it only came from me doing their private conversations when I'm dealing with bankers at conferences and conventions. So this information was paid for that I'm giving to you for free. Had to make sure- Now I put it in the chat. When he, when he put it out there, put it in the chat so everybody can see it, you know? So, so if you take credit cards, we put credit cards in the chat. Let, let everybody, you know, follow along so we can get this game. Go ahead. That's right. So it's six different types. The, the one is called credit cards. You guys probably know them. It has a Visa MasterCard logo that sits in the bottom right hand corner. Right. Then the, the thing about this credit card is that the name of the bank that's on this credit card, if you flip it to the back of the card, it'll also have the name of the bank that's on the card. 
right? That's what makes that a particular credit card on that end, right? Number two, which with number two is you can have a uh, what we call a co-branded card. A co-branded card may have the name on the front of the card, but on the back of the card, it would have a different name. And on the right hand corner of the card, that card will have a Visa MasterCard logo with the store name on top. So give me an example. Of one is the Best Buy card, right? That Best Buy card may be um, uh, may have a city logo on it, right? So there's Best Buy and city, which makes it a co-branded card. There's a third card. That third card is called a store card, a store card, which means the only name on that card would be the name of that store, right? And it does not have a Visa MasterCard logo. Notice that if you go to Walmart, Target, or even Best Buy, you will see that they have a store card and they have a co-branded card, right? That's what makes them in that particular category. So right there, you got three. Number four is what you have a charge card. A charge card is a different type of card as well. This card says that I pay my bills on time each and every month because a charge card, you must pay your bills in full or there's a hefty penalty to be involved in. Number five, the, five, the, the number five thing is called a medical card. These things where you can use to enhance body figure of, of fragments, right? Where one day you can, if you're looking, you can enhance other body fat, uh, uh, other, other body procedures, right? Or you can take away other body, uh, other, other body functions, right? Or you can so you use get that BBL. <laughs> or you can use it for health benefits, or you can use it to, <laughs> to get you some pharmaceuticals and things of that nature, right? Um, that is what we call a health card, right? And then um, the last one, not but least, this one comes in, uh, this one comes in a variety of different categories, but it's the last one. And that is called a line of credit. And a line of credit can be distributed to you from business or personal. Um, and that card and that line of credit, you can either have a personal line of credit, a business line of credit, or one that you guys probably heard about. It's called a home equity line of credit, which Mr. Don Daly knows all about. But this is where they, they keep trying to get you in that trick bag again. Well, those are the things. So understanding that when you have a credit mix, you want to have, you want to make sure that you can show all of these different varieties are showing on your credit profile so you can now have an enhanced figure of a credit of, of a credit mix especially from different lenders and as we talked about before is dealing with the power eight banks so so quick question so we can break it down even more you know when we're talking about credit cards what, what's one credit card you think everybody should have just regular credit card now I, I'm, a, I'm 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 torn between two right and let's hear it. let's hear it. we want to hear both of them I got my pick for one, but they both are one A, one B, and nobody's wrong about which direction it is. Category right. credit card comes in three categories. All right. And we're gonna go over the first category, and I'm gonna give you the other two. The first category is what, what, what we call Chase and Amex. They like they they like they twins, man. I'm telling you, they just twins. Chase and Amex is number one. That's the first category, right? It's, I didn't say Chase Amex and no, I didn't. I said Chase and Amex. That's it. That's they, it. They sit above the best. They the head honcho. They the they the they the, the, they, the, they, the, they, the, they the the LeBron James and the Steph Curry's of the game, right? They the Giannis. They they the, they the Jokers. They the, they the, they the head honcho, right? Of of this game, right? Then you got the other category, which is called subprime lending. These are the things that um, uh, when you start talking about credit one accounts, first premier, these are terrible, actually horrible. I don't know if I can use the word horrible. Um, my granny gave me a word for it, but I can't use that on this on this air. Um, but they they are terrible, right? And and those are called subprime lending. And if you want to know if you fall in the subprime lending category, if you apply for ten places and they all told you no, but this you one know. said, "Yeah, we got you today," right? And you got to pay a two hundred dollar entry level fee to get in the club, and you did all this. You got to pay fifty dollar application fee and twenty five dollar this. And then they say you can deposit two hundred dollars and get you a two hundred dollars secured card today. If they give you all of that, chances are you got bad credit, right? And you don't want that card. And then the third category is which I call everything else. Everything else. Any other credit card after that? There's everything else. So just know those three so, categories. So everybody here should have a Chase and an Amex. It's not both. All right. So let's go to the next one. Co-branded card. What's some co-branded cards you think people should be getting? Well, co-branded cards are co-branded cards are cards of a person um, liking of what they do on a regular. So you have to take an evaluation with yourself. So, for example, Neil, you may be a person that frequently shops at places like uh, a Home Depot, 
right? Or you may go to a floor in the core if you're in that particular realm of work, right? And so therefore you want to be able to, you get a co-branded card. But now what, the thing about these co-branded cards is that um, when it comes to these this particular category, you got to understand that you may get a discount for the very first time. They, they come around real heavy at Christmas time. Now, what is the real heavy part about that, that? What you can understand is that around Christmas time, they will come out real heavy and they'll say stuff to you. Like uh, if you apply for this credit card today, right, you will get 15 percent off of your total purchase. Right. So you got to be very weary. And you all. And if you do have a co-branded, you only want to have like one or two of those. And they've got to be at a place that you frequently a lot. Right. Um, so those, I don't never want to say one particular place. It's where you most frequent most at. Gotcha. And most co co branded cards is partnered with like Synchrony Bank, um, Citibank. Yeah. Best Buy is partnered with Citibank. Um, so you know you can figure out who they partner with on the back of the card, or you can just ask them or look at the application. All right. Sure. Uh, I'm I'm sure you wouldn't recommend a store card, but we just going over all the different types of uh, revolving credit. So we're not gonna recommend store cards, charge cards. Now that's kind of like a gold card, platinum card, right? Correct. Um, American Express does them. Diners Club. You got a you got a particular element of those for sure. Okay, and then medical cards. That's uh like Care Credit. I don't know yeah. what other ones they have. Um, it's like three different ones. Care Credit is one of the main ones that everybody uses from 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 Synchrony. So even though it seems like it's a co-branded card, it's, it's actually a med- it's actually fit in the medical uh, facility of a. But it's also fit in the medical facility. All right. And then lines of credit, they can just go to what all right, since we're talking about lines of credit, what do you think is the best banks to get a line of credit with? We talking about big regional bank, we talking about big banks, Chase Wells Fargo, regional banks, you know, that may be in your state, the next state over, or you think the small banks, credit unions and the community banks. Which which one is the best one to get a line of credit for? If we're going personal. That's a good question. Um for one is that we gotta figure out what the plan is. Because I don't send nobody to no bank unless we got a plan, especially when you start getting a line of credit. Because people see money, then they start to use money unconditionally from that attribute. So what we got to do is we got to have that plan. That plan is uh, is saying, okay, are you starting a business, right? And then where are you starting a business at? Um, because I could send you to a Chase Bank to get a line of credit, right? And this is where you can pick up a loan of say a half a million dollars, uh, you know, in that particular category. Right. Or you can be in a, or you could be in a particular place where locally in your community, um, this is a way that you can go to a regional bank or somebody that's locally and you can do this thing called partnership. It's this thing I like to call it's called NCRC. Right. Which is called number one. You have to network. Number two, you have to you have to communicate. Three, you're going to you're going to be able to establish a relationship. And then four, you're going to be able to collab. So if you have a different project. So for you, a lot of real estate investors that's out there, a lot of regional banks may be. Um, more receptive to you or more local banks, because here you are uh, going to uh, say you're going to do uh, a strip mall that's locally that's in your area. Now, watch this, O'Neill. If you're doing a strip mall that's locally in your area, now, if you notice that on all projects that you see at the top of it, they have a sign and that sign would let you know about what's going on at that project. And so if there's a if there's a bank and this is for the purpose of the story, let's call it, let's give a bank a name. I don't know. Let's call it a bank called Premier Premier America Bank, right? Premier America Bank only has three locations, right? And they may be one locally in your area where Premier America wants to make sure that they're serving the um, a particular neighborhood, which you guys know, right? And so what happens is now they want to be associated. So by you doing that particular project in that area, they can associate with you with that particular project. And now what happens with them is they can put their name on that bank and now they can partner it up with you. So it makes more sense to actually get a line of credit with them because now they can be assisted on the project and now you become partners with them and they may want to do other endeavors with you from that attribute. Um, but you may, uh, it depends on, it depends on where you're at and what you got going on. That's that's why we got to do a complete analysis of, of, of what you're going to get the money for, how you're going to use it, how you're going to allocate it, where the funds are going to come from. And then from that part, we can go into the banking aspect of it to get the monetary aspect from, from any one of the, the selected locations, um, especially depending on um, if we got people that we actually have connections with. It may be a situation that where um, your school teacher that teaches your fourth grade child uh, husband is the is the branch manager at this local bank. And, and that may be your direct connection, a person that can put forth more effort in going to make sure that you you getting approved and that sort of thing. Like it, like it, like it. Now, give us a few more examples of installment loans, because we're still talking credit mix right now. We talked about uh, revolving. Now we're talking about installment. So let's just say they're a 20 year old. They're not really they don't need a car. 
and now looking to buy a house, what type of installment loans can they get today if they're looking to get they they're looking to build their credit profile up? What kind of installment loans do you think they should get? Okay, so and what we, kind of installments do they have available? Yeah, so they got what you call personal loans. Personal loans are, are a type of installment loan, uh, installment accounts, and this is where that you you have a again. This is where you have a set payment amount over over a period of time, and uh, also. Right. You can also get into where you're going to get a, a vehicle. Maybe you're, you're saying to yourself, I need a vehicle. Right. Or, or something of that caliber. Right. Maybe an installment loan fits you for that particular lifestyle that you're in for that. Right. Or maybe that you're saying from from that particular element, maybe you're saying I'm um, saying flame. Um, I got my child is getting ready to go to school. Uh, maybe I need to get a student loan for them. Right. So these are all different categories that you can find pertaining to it. Um, you just find it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a point now that you're saying, um, I heard you the other day. You were saying to myself, like, hey, Flame, I, I need to go get me a furniture set. Right. Maybe if you get a furniture set, maybe you go to Bob's, um, maybe go to Bob's market, Bob's furniture store. Right. And he may have um, accounts there, which he uh, allow you to be able to get. He may have different accounts. Always ask about. Um, if, if somebody asks you saying that, hey, they may have a revolving account or credit cards, say, hey, do you guys also have installment accounts as well? Right. Ask them because you never know what they may have off the off the offer. Um, and and when they, you can find out what they can offer. Now it takes you into a different light because now you can get other products from them as well and strengthen up your portfolio. Love it. Love it. What's your thoughts about CDs? Certificate of deposit. Um. It's an investment with low, with low, with low to low. Right. Right. So what people don't know, a, a CD is a certificate of deposit. You basically taking out a loan on your own money and you paying back the money that you got. Basically. Uh, I know when I was 18, I got one because I didn't know, you know, I didn't have all the information that I have now. You know, that, that was my first installment loan, but it helped me out. So. Yeah. They got different varieties of loans you can get. All right. Um, let's see what else we got. Let's go back to that uh to that screen real quick, Ruby, so we can look at it. Scroll back up if you don't mind, so we can look at the uh, chart again. I'm trying to make sure our people got some good credit, man. Oh no, for sure. So let's let's stay right here for a second because I want to make sure they they get a lot of value out of this room today. Uh, I mean, out, out of out, out, out of this uh, live today, I want to make sure that you get a lot of value out. of Right. When we start talking about those five different categories that she's went down to the mix. Right. One of the first things is that we made sure that we paid our payments on time, which is 35 percent of the score. Right. But we also got to understand what happens if you don't make your payment on time. What can you do from that attribute and how do you can recover from it? Right. So when you fall into those categories, you fall into things such as late payments, charge offs, collections, repayments possessions, foreclosures, bankruptcies. You fall into a negative category from that component. So what we're looking for now is saying, Hey, hey, Flame, I fell into that. I fell into that 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 derogatory component, right? I have a late payment. I have a charge off. I have a collection. If anybody here right now in this, if anybody right now on this live right now, if anybody right now has anything derogatory, right, on their credit profile, right, and if you believe it, if you haven't seen it, right, what if I want you to do one thing for me right now? Go to the chat right now. Put your number five up. Put your hand up right now to let me know that I'm not just speaking to the air. I want to find out if there's anybody that falls into that particular category where they said you know what flame i made a mistake i i, I made, things weren't going right for me at that time i may have fell into that life credit category if you too have fell into that predicament put a number five down there because i want to see who can we help today and get them out of that particular situation you see what i'm saying on there how do we, how do they move forward yes, after they to get up out of there Right. I'm looking now. I see us. I see a few fives that's coming in now. All right. So what, what I want you guys to understand is that when you when you guys fall into a late payment category, what you have to do, the very first thing that you guys got to do is pull your credit report. Don't run from it. Don't hide from it. We stand tall and we face it. You remember we talked about the millennials earlier and about what can they do to get themselves out of situations? How do they grow from it? The very first thing that we got to do is we got to face it. How do you face it? You got to pull your credit report. Right. I'll make sure that I throw something in the chat here in a second. Right. To pull your credit report. You want to pull your credit report. Pulling your credit report, pulling your credit report is, is good. Now, annualcreditreport.com gives you a free credit report once a week. They said in 2024 that they was going to stop that, but they still continue as of whatever yesterday was called. What's, what was yesterday? Tuesday? Monday? So Monday they did. They, Monday. They was, right? 
So that was where that came from on that end. So if you pull your credit report, you got to circle the negative items that's on your credit report. Circle, flame slow down. Circle the negative items that are on your credit report. Circle them, right? How do you circle them and what do you know about what you're circling? You're circling anything that has a derogatory mark. If you have late payment or charge off, charge off mean that if you have, if you went four months, five months, six months and didn't pay somebody, that means you could have fell into a charge off status. Or if you, or if you in collections, if you in collections, therefore that you could have been faced into that same type of category as well. Now collections come in three categories: it comes in first party, second party, and third party collections. So if you guys have failed in there, we're going to write a letter to the actual credit reporting agencies, and you're going to tell them saying, "Hey, I need this person to validate this debt, right?" Which means that I'm looking for any contract that bears my signature and which I did a contract with them. So that's what you want to do. You're looking for a validity of debt. So if you have a late payment or if you have a charge off, one of the first thing is that you want to you want to validate that debt. One of the things I don't do is I don't call and ask for any type of leniency first. I don't do any of that. Now, why don't I do that? The reason I don't do that is because at that particular point, now I'm admitting to it. See what I'm saying? Mm. I admit. Oh, I oh, 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 you got you to gotta run it back. You got to <laughs> run it back. Because a lot of people say, man, call them and say you made a mistake, this, that, that. What is the reason why you don't call and, 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 and act like you need all kind of help and you admitting that you had hard times? We gotta break. We gotta break that down. Um, like certain things, I don't do. I don't tell people that I was um, in uh, FEMA. Right? There's a thing that when people talk about, I listen to the internet. They say, "Man, tell people that you're in a FEMA disaster." The moment that you tell somebody that you're in trouble, the moment that you're telling somebody that you, you that you're not gonna be able to pay them back. I'll say that again. The moment that you tell somebody that you're in trouble, the moment that you already pre-registered not to pay them back. Right? And it also, they will put things on your credit report, like a consumer statement. Again, it's a consumer statement that they'll put on the credit report. And when they put that consumer statement on the credit report, other people, other lenders, when they're trying to see if they want to do business with you, they can see that you've already been in, 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 in such and such, right? They, you've already been in some type of turmoil. So we don't want to put any of that stuff that's on there, right? We don't want to. Uh, one of the things is uh, that I have to go over sometimes, O'Neill, is when people talk about doing settlements. Right now, is it yeah. good to do settlement sometime? Yeah, but you gotta understand if you do a settlement, you ain't gonna never work with that person again. So just let that be known. Let's 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 open it up. That's dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Settlements, boy. A lot of us settle with the settlements. So you say stay away from the settlements and stay away from telling them, hey, I, I went through a hard time. Now, if you do a settlement, I'm, I'm not going to say completely, but if you do a settlement, make sure that you don't never want to do a business with them again in life. Just so if sure. you don't do a settlement and you don't admit to, to having a hard time, you should just start paying them back slowly over time or what? Oh, it might be frozen. Might be frozen. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, let, 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 let's go to you, Don. I know you had something you wanted to bring up. Well, listen, we're talking about, Flames talking about paying, you know, paying the people back. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons why people get, they, they work really hard to get a good credit score is because they think they're going to be able to get a lower interest rate, okay? And so what we teach our clients at the Pill Method is how to create your own interest rate. What did I just say? Create your own interest rate. It's called the effective interest rate. And we can show you how so we have the cheat code for this. So I, I've got an example here of somebody who owes um, a total of $98,000. $98,000 is what they owe. Here's how much interest the bank wants on, on the money that they borrow. $40,000 in interest on $98,000 borrowed. When we get through with it, we're going to show our clients how to pay only $16,892 in interest. So you don't need more money to get out of debt. You need to pay less interest. And that's the, that's the thing that keeps you in debt forever is the interest. So how do I pay less interest? Using the amount of money I'm already working with. You don't need to make more money. You just need to be, 
You just need to be efficient with the money you have. And there's a way you can pay the bank back so that you don't have to pay them all of that interest. So if we take a look at how much interest this person is actually going to pay, what interest rate would they have to have from the bank to do the exact same work? They would have to have an interest rate of 1.08%. 1.08%. Where are you going to get money like that? How are you going to borrow money like that? Never. So you need to control that. You need to be in control of how much interest you pay. Stop paying retail for your money and get your money at wholesale. Here's a here's a little larger loan, a total of $416,000. The bank wants $163,000 in interest on that, $163,653. We're going to show this person, we show this person how to pay back only $41,000 in interest and pay off their loan in 7.6 years instead of 27 years. 7.6 years instead of 27.1 years. So What interest rate would they have to have from the bank to do the exact same thing? 0.64%. Less than 1%. You can be in control of how much interest you pay. The average family, the average family has 13 different debts while they're filling out their profile. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that that's That's the reality. And we're talking about people who make good money and pay their bills. Okay. They have about 13 different debts and they're paying 35 to 39% of their take home pay just on the interest payments alone. Not the entire payment, just the interest portion. 35 to 39%. And these are people who make good money and they pay their bills on time. I'm not talking about people in trouble. Okay, I'm talking about people who who get good, uh, who have good credit scores, who who have good relationships with their bank. When you get a three percent mortgage, you're going to pay back fifty one percent of what you borrowed. So if you have a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, even at even at three percent, you're going to pay back if you let the bank (laughs) have its way. One hundred and three thousand dollars in interest over 30 years. Why? Would you ever think that 3% is a great rate when it really means 51%? 4% mortgage really means um, 71%. 5% means you're going to pay back 93% of what you borrowed. If you have a $100,000 loan at 5% interest for 30 years, you're going to pay back $93,000 interest on a $100,000 loan. If if you have a 6% loan, you're going to pay back more interest than you borrowed, 115.838%. So what do we do to make sure that we pay the least amount of interest on a loan? You've got to know the cheat code. You've got to know the cheat code. So here is an amortization schedule right here. It's a $400,000 mortgage at 7%. The payment is $2,661.21. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right. And so here's what the bank wants. Uh, $558,000 interest on a $400,000 loan. How is that 7%? How is that 7%? It's not. It's 130. Total interest paid as a percentage of principal, 139.5%. So what can we do about it? We can pay the bank back on our own schedule. If I pay the bank back that payment on the very first payment, look how much money goes to principal. This goes to paying the loan down. This is how much interest they want. I just created, yes, I just created $327.88 worth of equity, but it cost me $2,333 to get it. I, I, I don't know if that's a deal, okay? But if I make this payment right here, and all I have to do is take, if I have a, just a little bit of money in the bank, $329.79, that would be the principal payment for next month. If I prepay this, I get rid of line two immediately, meaning I make my regular payment 
my very first payment, and I look at my principal payment for the next month, I pay that in the same month I pay my first payment. If I do that, I'm paid down to line two on my amortization schedule in just the first month. My next mortgage payment or loan payment would be on line three for February. So if I start this in January, this would be my new February payment. What did I do to get rid of line two? I just gave them three hundred. Yeah, I gave them three hundred twenty-nine dollars and seventy. Yep, yeah, pay the principal early, and I don't have to pay them two thousand three hundred thirty-one dollars in interest. I got this a question is, about this. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Don. Yes, sir. Uh, this, this is Don and Plant. You know all these. You know we've been banking with these, these banks for twenty, thirty years. You think they're your friend? Why they never sit down and explain this to us? And why they don't offer? They don't give us the amortization schedule and show all this. They only got, what, three, four columns? Right. They give us an amortization schedule. They give us principal. They give us interest and principal balance. balance. When This is from Brett Whistle, and I, I'll, I'll give this to you guys. You, um, This is right online. You can get this and play around with it, okay? So I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this to you guys so you can have that and play around with it yourself. There you go. So why do you think nobody sit down and explain this to us when we want when we saying, hey, you know, I'm looking to get a house, looking to get a loan. You know, they just the, say interest rate and the cost of the house. That's it. And the the bottom, the bottom line, the bottom line is this, O'Neill. This has been around since 1936. The very first amortized loan hit the United States in 1936. As a as a as a answer to the Great Depression, all right, how to get people back into their homes? Because prior to this, the, the you had to have like eighty percent down um, on your mortgage, and you had interest only payments. They weren't amortized like this. This is called a self amortizing loan, meaning by the time you're done, you owe nothing, all right. But the way that they set it up. It makes the bank a huge amount of money, okay? So every month you get a brand new mortgage. This starts out at $400,000. You make a payment, only three twenty-seven eighty-eight dollars goes to principal. This is a brand new mortgage now. Now they have to charge you again. And when they charge you again, your interest goes from $2,333 to $2,331. <laughs> That's it. Wow. So if I want to, if I want to understand this, if I understand this, I know how to beat it. This is why when, when, when the self amortizing loan came into existence, the reason why there's no education around it, because our system in the United States is unique. When you get a mortgage from a Chase or Wells Fargo or, you know, Citibank, this is why you get a notice within a week or two that your loan has been sold. It's been sold to an investor. And they love making this money. They're looking to get this money here. That investor buys your loan from the bank at a premium. And you think Chase is making interest off your loan. And they are not. The investor is. Chase makes their money on your loan within two weeks. In the front end. Yes, because they don't have enough money to handle all the mortgages that are under their roof. They get their money back within two weeks so that they can lend out again and they sell it on the uh, what's called the secondary market. And the, pers- and the people who buy this loan love getting this money for the next 30 years. 30 years. Look, Look how much money they're making every single month. So how do we beat it? We we beat it by giving the bank money, giving them money in our own time, in our own schedule, and small amounts of money kill large amounts of interest. I give them this money. I'm paid down to here in uh, in one month. I save just save myself twenty three hundred dollars in interest. And my next mortgage payment has moved down to line three. 
I got rid of one line for only 329 bucks. If you look at cumulative principal and cumulative interest, this is why the banks or the investors do not want you to understand it. They want you to start forgetting about how much interest you're actually spending. I call it interest consumption. How much interest are you actually consuming every single month? We have no idea. If I ask of all, everybody who's watching the show right now, how much interest are you consuming every month? Nobody Most knows. Most people don't know. Not even, not even you accountants know how much interest you're paying every month. So this is just on the mortgage in one year. I have this mortgage, and in one year, I paid all these principal payments, comes to $4,000. How much interest did I pay to pay the loan to um, have the privilege of paying back my loan? $27,871.29 for the privilege of giving them $4,000. Have mercy. $31,000. You could do this with auto loans, yes. credit cards, houses. Right. If, I have, if I'm fortunate enough, and now this is just an example, if I'm fortunate enough to have a few bucks in the bank, do I have to give the bank this $4,000 in 12 monthly installments? If I had it, could I give it to them on line one, be paid down to line 12 in one month, and skip all of the interest payments between line two and line 12. Over $25,000 in interest saved for giving the bank exactly what they were oh, looking grand. for in 12 months. And if I do that in the first month, my second month payment is actually on line 13. I have a payment every month. That's wild. But if you, if you understand how to read this thing, because reading is fundamental. You've heard that. Reading an amortization schedule is not part of our educational system in America. If you don't believe me, pull up chat GPT and ask, is this being taught in the United States, in any business school in the United States? And even chat will tell you, no, it is not. <laughs> okay? It's not being taught. So why is it not being taught? Because of all the money it makes. It is amazing. So if our mortgages and other loans are not attractive to investors, then your bank can't sell your loan. Wow. Now, now, now Flame, I'm going to ask you this. How valuable do you think this information is that we just looked at? Man, I, it's... it's... I, I, don't, I don't think the, the people that's watching understand what we're looking at. Not nah, because what happens is this is this is a this is a, a part of the process is that the people that you're looking for for the answers and you're asking them to say, hey, why you didn't teach me this or why you're not telling us this or why, why is this not taught is because they have not been taught themselves. They actually just don't know. So they actually are telling you the truth. Yes. They don't know. Right. Because what happens is if you notice that if, at every job, what they actually do is they actually would go up and they would actually um, increase from that category. Right. They would actually have to retrain you and rebook you and put you in different categories. And that's one of the that's one of the problem is that what has to happen from there. Wow. Don, thank you for definitely sharing that, because, you know, if y'all trying to get out of debt, you're trying to pay off some stuff fast. You just get out of, you just get out of way, get out of website. So, so, so O'Neill, the, the thing is, is that learning how to leverage money is important. Okay. Especially if you're in business, all right. Borrowing money is a great thing. Leverage is a great thing. Learning how to get the credit is one thing. You need to learn how to get it. You need to put yourself in a position where you can always get approved. But when you get approved, the process doesn't stop there, okay? I want to, listen, if I could give you right now a 75% off coupon, okay, where the bank wants to, you to pay them $100,000 in interest, I'm going to give you a coupon to take to your bank and say, listen, I'm only going to give you $25,000 and save $75,000. I want 75% off. That's what you can do with your current budget, you don't need more money. 
You just need to know how to read an amortization schedule and learn how to manipulate it. When you do that, you can save a ton. And that $75,000 you did not give to the bank, guess what you could do with it? Anything you want, like invest it in your own family instead of making other people rich. That's what we're talking about here. Not just getting the credit, but using it efficiently and the right way so it benefits your family and not the bank. And so now you have a, um, you've got a, a relationship with your bank that benefits two parties, not just one. Love it, man. I love it. Let, 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 let's transition real quick. How can we actually, you know, we built out the good credit profile. We got a uh, revolving credit. We got installment. We got uh, everything we had. We, we moved the, um, the inquiries. We don't look too thirsty to the bank no more. We got to talk about ways like what Mr. Don is talking about. We got to talk about how can we actually make more money now that we have good credit. So, Mr. Don, what do you think about that? All right. I got my credit right, my credit profile right. How could they actually, what is ways you think they can actually take their credit to make money? Oh, my goodness. Do you know uh, they're, they're talking about how much equity we have in our homes? OK, for the average person who has a mortgage, they may have equity in their home and they're just sitting on it. The thing is, is that equity can evaporate overnight. Do you know anything about that, O'Neill? Sure can. Okay. We just seen that happen. OK, so if I have an opportunity to get uh, uh, take my equity out and invest it, what if I want to take some money out and I can invest it in some rental property? Because you can, with some training, you can take out some money and invest in two or three properties because you learn how to make the down payment in a way that you need to make it. You take that money out and put it to work. That's just one way, all right, to uh, invest your money. Find ways to use the, 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 the resources that you have and invest them. Don't just sit on it. Use it. Find a way to invest that money. Listen, it would be okay to find a even a higher yield savings plan, take some money out and uh, and put it in in over there in, in a high yield savings plan or a, a mutual fund. If you don't want to do anything risky like, so you, you may feel that real estate is too risky. I don't know. But take your money out to make money. All of your money should be making babies. All of your money should be making babies. That's, that, that, that's, you, that's the thing that people need to re realize. Sitting money in the bank to look at it is the very worst thing you can do. Do you know how many people I, I talk to? Die. Yes. A lot of people do that, though. A lot I, of people just, I they just open it. the account every morning. It's the same amount it was yesterday, and they smile, and they have. I see it all the time. $100,000 sitting in a, a bank account making one-tenth of 1%? One Lord have mercy. I see it all the time. And do you know that that's not even keeping up with inflation? Every day your money sits in the bank, it's worth less until it becomes worthless. What, what, what do you think that mindset comes from that people, let's just say they had a good run, they made a lot of money in one year, that money just sits there and they just continue to watch it, continue to watch it. We what, do think, what, what do you think that come from? Uh, they never had money before, so they want to hold it, protect it. They just want to make sure it stay there. What, what do you think? Based on what we, they've been told. I know told. we see that often. Based on what they've been told. Remember, the education, banking is in charge of our financial education, if, if you didn't know that. Banking is in charge of your financial education. Mm. And when banking is in charge of financial education, then we're told that cash is king. How many times have you heard that? Heard that a lot. Heard that growing up. Cash is king, and we should save. So, so if the banks want us 
to hold our money in our bank account so they can lend it out 10 times. <laughs> so basically, we the fools in this situation. We, we have, we're taking the education that we have been given and we're trying to make the best out of the education that we have, O'Neal. What I'm saying is that we need a different type of education that's going to benefit us and put our money to work. Optimize the use of your money. Just think about it for a minute. How much money am I really making when I get that, when I get that um, um, statement from the bank and they told me that I made three cents on my money sitting in the bank? That should be a wake-up call. Should be a slap in the face. So take my money out of there and find a place that is safe and effective to put my money to work. Put your money to work. No lazy money. Okay. No lazy money. No lazy kids. No lazy money. Put that money to work. I love it. I love it. Do you think it's it's a culture thing or just just people in general that just like to look at money? Well, yeah. We, like, we, we suffer. Us as black people suffer suffer with it more rather than other people. Or you think that's just a thing? I think it's a. I think it's human nature. Um, the fear of loss is more powerful than the desire for gain. The fear of loss is greater than the desire for gain. So if I have my money in the bank, that's safe. I feel safe with my money in the bank because uh, even though I could make seven or 10 or even 12% on my money by investing it, that has an element of risk. So the fear of loss, the fear of losing my money keeps my money in the bank making one-tenth of one percent. It's human nature, and banks are playing into our fear of loss. So anytime you have, um, anytime you have great marketing people, you have psychologists on your marketing team, and they know that we are a, what we are afraid of when it comes to money, and then they they prey on that fear so that we do what's safe based on what they told us is safe. And then we don't get to make money the way we need to make money. You know, so some of the things that I, some of the things that I show uh, my clients is not only are we, are, are they able to, to uh, save interest? We show them how they could take that interest and do wealth accumulation with that. And this is take, taking that money that they didn't spend on interest and turn it into $1,334,000 in this case. And O'Neill, this is just 1% return on their money. This is a very safe, whatever it's safe investment you can put your money into. And over, over 20 years, taking that money that you didn't give to the bank, you could turn it into $1.3 million dollars and that's at a one percent return on your money what if the average was six or seven percent so everyday people working a w-2 job can become millionaires just by not giving all that interest to the bank you're on, you're muted you're right i was muted that's amazing so flame what's your thoughts man somebody got good credit they got a little money in the bank. They got a job. They got some income coming in. How could they actually leverage credit to make more money? What's your thoughts about that? What's a few things they can do? Man, listen, for, for starters, just so you know, is that when you guys will start talking about leveraging, it's all about is the, the, the getting the money is going to be the easiest part. So I want to make sure that I say that correctly and I say that strongly. Getting the money is the easiest part to this whole process. It's the easiest part. Now, the hardest part is being set up properly and being set up correctly, right? Oh, let's talk about it. Properly and being set up correctly. So now, what does that mean? That only means that there's two, there's four parts to this thing that we talked about before. The very first part that we talked about, and as I was talking about it, and I was telling you guys, is I was talking about the money aspect. I was like, man, you got to have money, right? So you always, you, you guys understand that component, right? Doesn't nothing start without the money. So that's the, the M is for the money part. Now, the, the R, 
uh, uh, the R is for you have to repair your credit. So now we, we talked about that. You got those negative items off. And then number number three is where you optimize, right? This is where you actually would have the correct type of lending accounts that O'Neill went over so properly. And that was good, man, by you too, for sure, bringing it back in. Shout you out for that. And then the last part is which we're on now is talking about the leveraging. Now, the very first thing that you gotta have is have your four best friends. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to make sure that I say this. I gotta make sure that this is what we own. You got to have four best friends. What is your four best friends entail, and what does it detail? Your four best friends include an attorney, a mentor, a CPA, and a coach. Listen, I'm gonna say this again. I gotta make Put sure. Put that in the chat. Right. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Yeah, your four best friends. In order to start any of this leveraging stuff off. You got to have your four best friends. It's a must. It's not like I think I should have them. I must have them. Again, that is your attorney, a mentor, a CPA, and a coach. Now, what is a CPA and why didn't you say an accountant? Uh, the reason I said a CPA as opposed to accountant because a CPA is the only one that can sign off on financials, right? And so when you understand that, that a CPA is the only one that's signing off on financials, right? Now, we, what we actually able to do now is we're able to go to a different component. Now, we understand that we have an attorney, right? We, we're making sure that we're properly in the, into that category, right? We're making sure that we have a mentor. A mentor is someone that you can learn from. So a mentor can be anybody that's already been through the path that you've been through. doesn't necessarily have to be the exact business that you've been in, but has to have some type of business credibility so you can follow them from that component. Next is when you start talking about having a coach. A coach gives you a strategy, gives you a plan, gives you a map to outline to, for you to be able to get there. You know, we talked about earlier by having that detailed plan. That's what that coach does. We're going to have that plan, putting that plan together. Right. So once you got those four best friends, the next thing that you got to do is making sure that, that you got to be able to leverage and you leverage that. We're going to go get a business. Right. But one of the first things is in the business is having a business name. So you got to do a name search. Right. You got to go do a name search. So one, I'm giving you all I'm about to give you I'm, I'm dropping them for you right now. The very first place that you go to is e-secretaryofstate.com. Again, that is e-secretaryofstate.com. That is e dash secretaryofstate.com. Again, that is e dash secretaryofstate.com. I want to make sure I'm giving it and that y'all got it. It's e dash secretaryofstate.com. That is by far, that is my favorite, my favorite website in the world. e dash secretaryofstate.com. You can go there, you can find your state, and this is where you can start to do your establishment with your business. Now, the next thing that you're going to do after you do your e secretary of state.com, right, you want to make sure that you got the right Nexus code for it. That's called North American Industry Standard uh, Industry Classification Systems. You want to make sure that you got that. And then once you're able to once you're able to figure out what kind you are, then you're going to go ahead over to rs.gov and go get your EIN number, your EIN number, your EIN number. This is for tax purposes. Then once you overdo that, then you got to go over to FinCEN so you can register your business. Right now, since they just established this as of January 1st, 2024, all businesses must be registered with the federal. They used to only have to be registered with the state. Now they have to be registered with the federal. So that's one of that's one of the places that you would actually have to go to. Then after you do this, you want to make sure that you got all these other things properly intel which is your address your phone number your website all of these things which makes your business right and then you're going to go from that and then you're going to make sure that you register over with dun and bradstreet dun and bradstreet dun and bradstreet that's dmb.com you want to make sure that you register with them right and then on top of that we're going to make sure that you go get you a bank account right because now when you walk inside that bank you understand where we're going from now on now we're properly we got our stuff properly together now now we can walk inside that bank right now and we can take in our articles of incorporation or you can take in all of these these measurements your EIN you can take these things in and open up your bank account right you want to open up your bank account with a minimum of ten thousand dollars with a minimum of ten thousand dollars somebody says well flame I don't have ten thousand how can I do it well if you went through the steps which is number one which is have money then you actually repair your credit and you optimize it. O'Neill, I've created the 10,000 for you once you fix your Made credit. Made the money. Yeah, once you fix your credit, I created the 10,000 for you. So 
Now you you can't you don't have that to worry about, right? And if you don't, you always want to make sure that you got a bank a business bank account that is very essential. And then you want to make sure that you're depositing money inside that business bank account. But you also want to make sure that you have a record of your personal expenses. See, when we go get the money, O'Neill, these are the things that they're gonna understand. These qualifications must be instilled. Number one is that they're gonna say, hey, what about your personal credit, right? So you've already checked that because you already did your MROL. You've already got your personal credit. Together. Number two, they're going to say, well, if you got your personal credit together, let us see about your, your bank statements for your personal. You've already, you made money, so now you can have your now you can have your personal credit for your money, right? Also, what you also want to do on this category is you said, hey, I made money, now I can show my money. Then you're going to say, hey, there, another, there, there may be another variation like showing your taxes. See, when you start to go up in money, and I know you guys have heard it, where people will say, we give you no doc loans, we give you these type of loans. What we're doing is we making sure that we advertise our business correctly so we don't have to work. We don't Oh, blame cut out, man. He's going hard. I don't know what happened, man. Maybe he was lighting it up too much. Man. Listen, man. That's, that's, that's a lot of information. <laughs> you back. You back now. So, so now you got to... Now you now you don't have to worry about going to get, get these no doc loans. Now you can actually walk into a bank and tell them exactly what you need. Do you know how the feeling of you walking into a bank and you looking them dead in the eyes and saying that I need three hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars right and the person in front of you says that they're not qualified to help you because they can't go up that high do you know the feeling of walking inside of a bank and you're sitting there looking them dead in the eye saying i need 1.2 million dollars because you're not just saying it with the words out of your mouth when you created that business plan you saw that you need a marketing director you saw that you needed a social media manager you saw that you needed an admin you saw all of these specific areas inside of your business in which people that you have to pay for so therefore the monetary means are the things that you're gonna have to apply for so instead of you saying hey I need to go start me a, I'm gonna get me a cooking business because you can cook real well maybe that might not be the opportunity for you maybe instead of you trying to go get a building and build it up maybe it might be more essential for you to go buy an existing business that's already that was a business that was there before see these are the type of things that you understand that when you are able to get your credit together in this one particular category now you can start doing things like drop a gym form go to treasury.gov go to the bottom of it then you'll be able to see these things about where they're giving this money at you'll be understanding now that hey i can go over to sam.gov drop it again flame sam.gov where you can go get government contracts and these things and you can go over here and get monetary value where you can get a contract for three four hundred five hundred thousand dollars that pays you out because your credit can back it up where you can get the money to fund the business until the money comes in from being able to get your contract money in see these are the things that what we're talking about is that once you got your personal credit together you can go allocate and go do all of these other things that what you want to do. See, I seen people that was in here. I see my girl drop shipping queen that's in here. You guys want to get a drop shipping store, right? But what about funding that drop shipping store so you can get those products and merchandise? You got good personal credit, you can run over and do that. What about if you can do hair real good in your in, 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 in locally in your neighborhood? What about you getting a shop or storefront? You can get your credit and then you can attach your credit to that business and go out and go get the money. The thing of the matter is attaching your personal credit to all of these different endeavors, and that allows you to go get the money. But in order in, in Apple, you attach your credit to it you got to make sure that your business is properly structured just calm down bro. Ooh, <sighs> nah you preaching though you preaching <laughs> man drop some flames in chat hit the like button for flame man you're going crazy right now y'all getting some value man put some flame in the chat my bad on you man i just get carried away no, 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 no. you good man you did good <laughs> <laughs> no nah, because but you ain't lying though because Cause if you set up this shit, the stuff, uh, the stuff right in the beginning, it's not gonna be hard when you really need it. We, when we really need it, we trying to figure out all kind of ways to get it done in two days when you should have got, you should have did it a year ago. So you got to think about the end in mind every time you do business. Set it up from, the, set it up the right way in the beginning. So whenever you go in the bank, you can look them in the eye directly and say, "I want this," and you're not nervous, you're not scared, you're not thinking you're getting, you're getting denied. You know you're getting approved because you did everything right the right way. The O'Neill, it really boils down to this, is that, see, a, a half a million dollars seems like a lot of money. A half a million right. dollars seems like an extremely lot of money to some people. But after you break down your business and you see where the funds are being allocated, you may say to yourself, a half a million dollars may not be enough. 
Right. You see what I'm saying? If you need more, if you need more, how you going to get it? Man, listen, that personal credit, that's why when me and me and Byron, we were sitting there and we was having a conversation, right? And shout out to Byron and make sure that I, you know, definitely all the condolences in the world and the heart goes out to him and his family, right? But I want to also inform you that as we were talking, we were talking about the, the amount of people that are actually getting credit and just holding on to a credit score. They're holding on to credit like it's just some type of, like it's just a last piece because of credit. Because it's a trophy. Right? you got to be using this credit. If you're not using this credit, you in the way. You're in the way. Listen, I'm going to show you different things. Maybe you have somebody else that has a great skill set. This is where I'm going now. Y'all see where I'm going? Somebody else has a great skill set, and you can be able to take them and help them build out their credit. Right. You can be able to take them in their business and become a partner in a business by just being a person that is credit worthy. You know, no what I partnership. Mean? See, see how this is working now. You see how this partnership. Is working now? Let's talk about it because we, we, we need to talk about that part, too, because let's just say somebody has a good credit, good credit profile and then somebody has a great idea. And that person that has a great idea. Of course, their credit isn't the best. How should that business? What does that business look like? How could they get funding? How could they go to the bank and say, look, you know, we got this idea. One partner credit is this, one partner credit is that. Should you go in the bank and say, hey, we 50-50, his, part, his credit is 560 minus 800. How can we make this happen? What does that conversation look like? Because a lot of people don't know how to properly structure a business to get funding. They go in there and tell them all the information. So how should, how should, how should two people do that? And that's a good that's a good question. So we see it all the time. People just go in the bank and they just they just keep it real with them. They let them know, and they walk away with a frown instead of a smile. Yeah, because when you when you look at, when you look at it from this component, right, is that okay in partnerships in business, right? There's a thing that when you call it 50 50 whatever it may be 50 however you want to be labeled. But when you go get credit at a bank, one of the interesting factors that they would ask you about, O'Neill is that they would ask you about who's all a part of this particular business. That at the moment that you say that somebody is over the 20% mark, at that moment, everything is going to come into a configuration pertaining to them and their business. So therefore, if you want the person to be a partner on the business and their credit is not as worthy as yours, right? You have to have a sit down conversation and said, hey, now this is when we get into this trust factor of understanding what business owners are and saying, hey, but um, we're collectively are 50 percent owners of this business. And me and you both know that. Right. But in order for us to move up in this category, I have to drop you down to 19, 18 percent and allow myself to be at 82 on paper because my credit is going to be the only one that they can be allowed to use pertaining to this component. Right. Now, if that's the and, and once that agreement comes into that, now their personal credit would not be involved in the lending decisions pertaining to you getting credit with that particular business. Now, I know about this all too well because I personally done it. So always understand. Something. Likewise, if I say something that comes off the tongue of my lip, if it leave off, if it leave off my head, come off my lips and come off my tongue, that means three things have occurred. Number one, I did it. Number two, I've done it. And number three, I'm currently doing. It. So this is actionable stuff that happens. I have an uncle, all right? My uncle installs floors. He installs floors. He can, that, this is what he do. He's been doing it forever, O'Neill. The thing of the matter was, right, in order for him to do the next job, he has got to get paid from the previous job. We all know him, right? right. So my granny used to call this dude or somebody. He's talking about Peter and Paul. Y'all know something about that? Some Peter Paul. <laughs> I don't know. Is Rob something? Peter to pay Paul. The Rob Peter to pay Paul. That's what Rob Peter to pay Paul. So what happens now is he got to always do one job to get to the next job. So he's always in a rat race over and over and over again. I seen that saying, hey, he's got contracts that he can actually get, but he couldn't afford to get the material because some of these materials you had to pay up front and you couldn't get your 50 percent up front. You had to get paid in a, what they call a net 30, which was called a 30 day cycle which means that you didn't get paid until after the job was completed and then you got to check 30 days after that, sometimes 60, right? So you got to be able to flow that business into that and he couldn't do it. So that limit the type of jobs that he was able to do. What happened next is I was able to get an account at a place called Floor and Decor, right? Which allows him to get some of his property and I also got an account at Home Depot, right? With me having these two accounts, 
right? Now he's able to flow and get the product of the business to start to flow. And, and now he's able to get bigger jobs. When you get bigger jobs, what also happens on there, you also get bigger money, right? And now with me being a partner with my uncle on these business ventures, now it allowed him time to go work on his credit and get his credit together along with me being able to fund these businesses so he can make more money. Now, as of today, he's got two, he's got, he's got two vans, he's got a pickup truck, um, and he's also being able to do jobs that's up to $50,000 at a time. So now his, not only did his pay increase, his living increase, say that again, not only did his pay increase, his living increase, right? His living increase because now he stays at a better home because now he, he went from the one shack that he was, I just call him uncle shack with this one, <laughs> right but now he now he has a better home and all that kind of stuff like that but it only measurement because he was able to get more money in and so those are the type of things that they can be able to do by you guys bringing more money in guess what you can also do it can also provide you, the credit it can also provide your children with a different way of learning did you know that your credit can dictate what school that your kids go to what no, wait, say that again uh, did you know that your credit can dictate what you eat in your body? Huh? Mm. Oh, we, we could go on and on, baby. We could go on and on. I'm it just goes, getting it goes deep. Up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got. Let me. I, I need to back it up a little bit, Flame. So let's just say we got two people in the chat right now. Got it. one person got an eight fifty or eight twenty credit profile built out immaculate. The other person got the amazing idea. All right. You said you got to set up your business. The person with the with the less credit needs to be less than 20%. The person with the better credit needs to be over 80%. When you say you got to set it up, how are you setting this up? Is it a piece of paper? You write it on a piece of paper. Hey, you own 20, I own 80. How do you set that up for the bank to acknowledge all that? Because you can't just walk in there and say, yeah, we both own this business. He's 20, I'm 80. What does that part need to look like? Because we got we, we got to wake that up. So the compete so the people can understand how to actually set up the business. We never hit on that. Okay, cool. So there's a thing called articles of organization, articles, uh, um, uh, any of these things that when you start to go get your business, whether you want to go get an LLC or whether you want to get a corporation, right? And so you have to do your legal work, your your, your legal work on that end um, pertaining to that, right? And so what you're going to do is you're going to be able to send that in to the Secretary of State. So one is it is documented state level wise. Right. Being able to document the state level wise. Also, that you're going to be able to have written agreements, which you could, which you will actually have notarized pertaining to the percentages of the companies. And those are the things that when you have your when you have your businesses together. So collectively that when you that's what I consider call having your paperwork. So when you go inside of a sitting inside of a bank, when you go inside of sitting inside a bank and you're opening that bank account, they're going to ask you those things as well. So every particular part that when you're doing your business entities, in, in your business legalities, they're going to ask you about, okay, so we see that this part of the company is this, but who actually has that, who actually owns this particular company? Uh, what are the names that are on here? Who has more than 20% shares on it? That's where you'll be able to, that's where you'll be able to put it at because now it's backed up at the Secretary of State with all your paperwork and things that are illustrated on that end as well. Perfect, perfect. So when you walk in the bank, it's important that you acknowledge, hey, there's two people who that's on this business, but he don't own only, he only own 15%. So we ain't got to worry about that. So it's you're, our you're, job. Yeah, we ain't got to do it. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't got to do all that. Like once you, once you submit the stuff, like a, a lot of times people like to go into the bank and sometimes you, they, they want to do a whole lot of damn talking, right? You ain't got to do no right. damn talking. You ain't got to do no damn talking to them damn bank. I'm going to tell you this now, right? They got things, they got things that they can illustrate in front of me, right? They could say, well, um, well, give me a second and they can pull this type of stuff. That's why recorded data is the most important data that you can actually have. You don't got to tell me you're a baller, big dog. You ain't got a big lady. I see all the purses that you got and you look amazing. You don't got to tell me that you're getting money all day. You know what tells me that you're getting money all day? That 4506C when we pull them tax transcripts. It tell me, if, listen, you could go to the bank. You could go to the bank with a Chanel on, with your cup, with your perfume on. I mean, you Don't stand mean high class, you pull it up there and, and you pull it up there in the S560. I mean, you looking bright. And when you walk out of the bank, you know what they're giving you? 
a slip to the food good. pantry because they trying to figure out how you're making it out here with that when, when they pulled your taxes they seen that the, the numbers at, at the bottom is not adding up so that's what i'm trying to say is that men lie women lie them numbers don't lie so when they pull out this information that covers them you got it yeah, you that's a real conversation because a lot of people Act like they got money, they think they got money, but it ain't, it's not on that tax return. You ain't got sh nothing. Not on nothing, man. That's, and, and I think that's that. Hey, and Mr. Don, you laughing over there. Talk to us. <laughs> it, that's so true, man. That's so true. So, we, listen, just, just take a little bit of time and learn more about how money works. That's all this conversation is about. How does money work best for me and the and the regular information that's out there is not good enough. The banks are in charge of our financial education. So if, you, if no one is teaching you how the lending process actually works, how the bank makes their money through lending, and what you can do to upset their apple cart, meaning what can I do to make sure that I can make it impossible, and yes, I'm using that word, I can make it impossible for them to charge me all the interest that they wanna charge me, and I can borrow their money at a discount, and they don't even realize that I know. In fact, the person that you're talking to, the loan officer that you're talking to, will wanna know what it is that you're doing once you know how to read an amortization schedule, because, do you realize they borrowed their money from the same bank using the same information and they think it's the best thing since sliced bread? That's why they are so confident when they tell you this is the right thing to do because they're doing it. Lord have mercy. Oh, because they, they train them on what they want them to know. And that's exactly. like, that, that's, that's the thing is that that's why they got these levels, right? So these levels is, like when, when you go to these levels, you will see that in order for somebody to, to, to go up a different level, you know what has to happen? They have to be retrained again. So they only tell you what they want you to know, even from the people that's working into these places that you expect to give us the information. The reason they don't know it is because, it be, because they've only been trained about what they know. Right. You could be somewhere for 10 years. Right. And got 10 years experience. And if I'm at Chase and I worked at Chase for 10 years, did you actually know that if I went over to work at Wells Fargo or Bank of America, did you actually know, O'Neill, they have to retrain me? Why do they have to retrain me? Because they got to train me on that particular bank rules and procedures. Right. So if it's a national rule and procedure, you wouldn't have to get retrained again. Exactly. But they always keep training you on what they want you to know. And the more that they keep training you on what you to know, guess what ends up happening? You end up believing them about what they're saying. They're not wrong for what they're saying, right? Because they're only teaching it to you based upon what they know. And that is the difference. That is the sole difference. That is the major difference is because you can't teach me what you know, right? I'm telling you what I've been through and I'm giving you a personal experience about what actually occurred. That's what the difference is. That if, if I know for a fact, I don't think this, I know this. And what do you know? I know that if you take some good credit, right, with, with great trade lines and you got a great and you got a perfect credit, I don't care what it is that you want to invest in, whether you want to invest, invest into real estate or whether you want to invest, invest in, to get you some hair products. I don't care what it is. You can attach your personal credit to a well built out business and go into a bank and come out with the amount of money that you want the to bank. come out with because you did that. Hey. Well, coming with closing with the show, man. What's your thoughts? Explain what 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 what's some identifiers and what some people, what some things that people need to look at when it comes to credit repair. We got to talk about it. is credit repair real? Do you have to wait seven years for inquiries to come off late payments? What's your thoughts about that? Because we got we got to talk on it. Because you know we got seventy five people in here. We got to keep it real. At least fifty need credit repair in some type of way. So, you know, we got to keep it real about that. Is credit repair real? You know what I'm saying? Can, can you remove stuff off your credit? You know, talk about that real quick. Okay. Well, yeah. So um, the very first thing that you got to do is, is is the elephant in the room, and that's to pull your credit report. You're going to have to pull your credit. That's just 
what you guys got to do. I'll send a, 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 a link in a second to put it in the chat. You got to pull your credit. You got to be able to see your credit. That's the first thing. Then once you see your credit, right, if you got late payments that's on your credit report, one of the things is, is that you, uh, even though that you may have a late payment, is it is it valid, right? Um, by you circling that, right, and you're contacting the credit reporting agencies like Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, did you, you also know that in order for them to report anything negative on you, if two things must occur, it must be 100% verifiable and 100% accurate. Again, that is 100% verifiable and 100, I said and, y'all caught that, right? And accurate. So they can't report anything unless they know. My job is to show them that something is unverifiable and inaccurate, right? And I don't have to show it that it's 100% inaccurate. I just got to show that it's 99. Why? Because if it's 99, that means it's not 100. And therefore, then they have to, <laughs> they have to follow the rules. <laughs> rule. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so if somebody wants to get that done, let's just say they got you know, a few missed payments over the years, let's just say two, three years ago. What does that process actually look like to start working with somebody yourself or any credit repair agency? How do you bear, how do you vet to see if that credit repair agency is real, authentic, or really getting results? Because you know, okay, so for me, the scam is on the rise. So for me, I have to make sure one of the things is is that you guys gotta ask questions. Now, but you don't know what questions to ask, right? Um, one of the questions is is that you want to ask them saying, hey, how long does this take? Right? Are you guaranteed to get this? Uh, um, are you guaranteed to get this off of my credit? Right? Ask them that question. And if they tell you the answer, yes, that means that's the person that you do not use. Okay. Gotta run away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If somebody, if 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 if, if you're dealing with if you're dealing with someone, right, and you're you're conversating with them, right, and you're asking them certain certain things, like, okay, well, hey. I got these negative items on there. What is my process? Can I see the letters that you send now? If people are unrefusing to do certain things with you, then you got to be able to see these things before they occur, right? Um, also, as you're getting your credit fixed, also ask with other people who they've used from people that already have, have gotten their credit fixed. Those, those people could be your friends and family members. It's okay to open your mouth and say to them, saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm about to go through this credit journey. Um, I seen, I notated that you was going through a credit journey one time. Um, who did you use, right? And, and getting people that you actually know from the people that they actually know, right? Can you reach out and touch this person or is this person on social media? Uh, another identifying factor, O'Neill, is seeing how long somebody um, has, has been, if you're seeing somebody on social media, right? One of the things that why people uh, look in my direction because I've been consistent over over the last um, 10 years on social media pertaining to, to, to with credit and stuff like that, right? You can look on my social media path and see that, oh, now watch this one. I got friends on my social media that I've known past 2022. <laughs> So if you if you go on somebody's page and they owe this friend is from uh, uh, June of 2023 and they had their account for 15 years, that should be kind of a red flag. Where where your friends at, man? Where, where, what happens? Did you burn people and did you block them? Um, and then you can listen to how people talk about other people, right? Because it, how they talk about other people may how they talk about you when you get done, right? Are they in a teaching mode? Do they do do they do they allow you to know what's going on with your credit journey? Or are they keeping it a secret or in tax, right? Do people get frustrated when you're trying to contact them? All of those little bitty things are amongst the big figures later on. So that's one of the things that you want to do is being able to vet them in a variety in a variations of different ways. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, fellas, y'all got any final words, man? We're going to go ahead and get out of here. What's your final words, Don? You got something to drop on us, man? It's not, it's not just enough to get the credit. You've got to know how to what to invest it in so that it can make money. And not only that, but always, always pay attention to what the credit is going to cost you and do everything you can to make sure you lower the cost of borrowing the money. Anytime you're in business, lowering the cost of expenses is key to that business. And every person I've ever talked to in business, they don't even know they can lower their expenses on borrowing the money. This is a new deal. 
This is a this is a a a revolution in understanding how money is borrowed and how to pay the least amount of money that is mathematically possible for you. And we have, you know, and there are there's an AI system, AI powered system that does all of the math that will tell you exactly what to do and when to make sure you're borrowing your money at the at the least amount of money that's possible for you. And anybody can take advantage of this AI system. So just just to put it out there, stop paying retail for your money. Pay wholesale for your money. Not only that, but it will increase your profitability in ways that no other business is doing it because nobody else is thinking about it. But you can. Thank you, Mr. Don. I was dropping that value flame. You got any final words? Oh, uh, man, definitely, man. Um, first off, um, go to my stuff, meetflame.com, uh, Flame Newton on Facebook. Um, also, I put a link in the chat um, that I'm giving you guys. This is something I'm saying verbally. I want to make sure that you guys get this. Um, it's something that probably when I get out of here, I'm going to sell it, right? That's what I do. I sell products for a living, right? So I sell stuff. I'm, as a business, you got to make money. But with, with this platform, with you guys, I'm going to give you guys this. And that is... I'm going to give you the 50 credit unions that I've used to go get some money from, right? Uh, 50 credit unions. You can download that link. Um, it's in the chat. I think we put it in the chat. If it's not, check in the chat. Put it in the chat. Uh, 50 credit unions, right, that I've got money from, so you guys can get a chance to get those. Um, I want to stay connected with you guys um, indefinitely. Man, I can't. Uh, O'Neill and Byron, let me tell you guys something. Uh, Ruby and you back in. You guys are phenomenal. Keep up the great things that you guys are doing. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, moving on to, to and, and becoming stronger, I can't look to nobody better between you guys because that's what you guys are doing, bringing value to the community, and we so deserve it, and, and, and I honor and I respect it. So definitely, my hat's off to you guys as well. Man, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, Flame, for coming in, blaming, uh, flaming us with all kind of heat. Of course, appreciate you, Don, man. You you come in as always, drop some game, teach us something that we, we don't know that we need to familiar familiarize ourselves with so definitely appreciate both y'all fellas y'all definitely some staples in the black community just the community in general but uh you know we we, we the black community needs y'all more than ever so we definitely appreciate y'all and uh i hope y'all got a lot of value today we was talking about credit today thursday we talking about business credit you know that's things we need moving forward but make sure y'all tune in it's gonna be um 6 30 a.m central standard time of course and look man if y'all enjoying the content join our membership to the channel next to the subscribe button is the join you can join our membership they got three different levels they got trailblazer got legacy they got visionary whichever one fits your your lifestyle go ahead and click one but the most important thing is you click one you join join the family man you get discounts on events we got events coming up you get discounts on merch you get discounts on uh i think some other stuff and we got some exclusive content coming so make sure you join the family we appreciate y'all with that being said we out man peace What's up, y'all? So most people struggle with sales. A lot of us in real estate, and we struggle with our sales. We struggle with follow-up, we struggle with leads, and we're just basically missing out on deals. For me, I just got on Taskify CRM. They send messages out for you. And look, a lot of us have work. When you get off of work, you have hot leads ready for you. Make sure you check out Taskify CRM. I'm telling you, it automatically replies for you. And look, it sends you multiple messages. Like we're talking about drip, drip campaigns, so you're not missing up on the lead follow-up. So make sure you check out Taskify CRM. Use coupon code no Stingy Energy to get 10% off. I'm about to show y'all inside my CRM so I can see how it really works. Make sure y'all check it out. Peace.